pro. And when they're out kind of by themselves, they can grow in an atmosphere like this. So that's what we're looking at. This will the next uh, the next scan will likely take this up to near. Uh, the Montgomery County line out of northern Pike County. Now, Murfreesboro, you're south of this rotation, but it will be moving up, and that is Highway 70 that runs right there. It will be, it looks like it'll be paralleling that, but Glenwood in your safe spot right now. And uh, I'm going to go back and just look, uh, folks, if we can. really on the ones that are there and I'm just going to go to the current picture here but look at the storm near Atkins right now out by itself I don't see any rotation with it as of yet uh, there are other storms though that are forming and every one of them starts to have this look at the back end of it like it is trying to rotate and so there is a severe thunderstorm warning on that one uh, in west central Arkansas south of Briggsville that includes the Perryville area, but just these storms that are out by themselves are of note, and those are the ones we're going to be watching very closely. Look at the sun coming out in eastern Arkansas. There's a high risk over in that part of the state. We're all under a tornado watch today, so this is the time to prepare. It won't be here forever. It's a fast-moving one, but while we are here, we need to keep close watch on these storms, and the one we're watching very closely right now is uh, very near Daisy, and we'll be moving up toward Glenwood. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to go back to the Velocity product here. Very, uh, we have the Hot Springs camera up, too, okay. that we're going to be able to use. And I've got that on Max 1 right now, so um, I'm going to have to step out. Can we take that full screen? I'm going to have to step out to move that around, uh, Barry. But uh, do you see... Yeah, it's, it's pointed in a... Which way do we need yeah, to go? Yeah, I think this? it's in a pretty good direction there. Uh, I well, would say it's maybe a little more, uh, maybe a little more to the. If somebody can control, a little more south now, maybe a little more west. A little can we right. get somebody to move it to the right? I don't have the ability on this computer to start moving. Oh, I, it now. I can. Oh, I you can. can do no it? problem. Okay. Yeah, move it. Okay. And, uh, yeah, this is one of our tools that we have here. I don't see the, the control panel on there that's I don't disappeared either, again. I'll, I'll, we'll get it. Yeah. Uh, if somebody in the control room can move that to pan right. I've got it. Yeah. There's the storm. You can see the hail core or, or there the, it is. Uh, the rain there it is. core of it. And uh, so that's what we're looking at. But that is definitely the rain part of that storm. I might even go just a little bit more uh, off to the east. Uh, but I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna just going to say in, in Hot Springs, that is the storm that's approaching you. It's still quite a ways away. Just rush your, uh, your errands, whatever you're out doing, just rush it to completion. School administrators, you need to go ahead uh, in like the, um, the, the district there in Hot Springs and on out into uh, Lake Hamilton uh, School District. Just go ahead and keep a watch on this. Keep it tuned here to Channel 7. We'll let you know exactly what's happening. But let's go back to, if I can, the Doppler radar. Here's a new image, and that remains a very, very tight couplet there of winds going uh, toward and away from the radar site. Low and that's die. along Highway 84, and it will be moving on up. Again, this is quite a distance now from Hot Springs, from Lake Hamilton, but uh, that is what we're watching, and it's going to be moving across Highway 8E, and, um, and there, they've reconfigured it, but look at that. Todd, I would be shocked if there isn't a tornado within that, at very least a funnel cloud, but uh, that looks like fairly strong rotation to me. It, uh, Lodi, or Lodi, I feel it's pronounced Lodi. Uh, this is where, if we can, uh, that's where the rotation with this, according to the radar, is exactly uh, located, going right over that, yep. and then you have... Uh, uh, Highway 8, you have Glenwood here. So Glenwood is just a little bit to your west by just a few miles. It's crossing over Highway 70, going up towards 240, 27, right up into this area. Glenwood, stay sheltered. It's just off towards your west. But uh, that is a tornado, and I'm going to look and see if we have any debris signatures with the radar. Uh, that looks inconclusive to me, Barry. Uh, it is concerning a little bit, but I, I'm not quite ready to say that that's debris, and I don't think it is. Uh, uh, but it, there there could be some. It's not lining up exactly where it is, but uh, that that is going to be coming into Garland County very soon. Checking with our partners 
and our friends over at the National Weather Service to see if they have any uh, information uh, of, of a possible tornado. They're saying that just south of Langley, west of Kirby, suggest that a tornado is active at this time. The storm may be too far away to see debris, uh, but the tornado threat is extremely high right now. And those are words from our friends over at the National Weather Service. So as you said, Barry, there's a very high likelihood that something bad is happening right now just outside of Glenwood. Yeah, and as we look at these other storms out to the west of town here, there are severe thunderstorm warnings on them. I don't see the rotation uh, with them like I do on the others, but uh, that's that's something we're going to continue to watch these storms out here. But the one that we are watching is on down to the south. And it's really the, I think it's a Fort Smith radar that is getting this uh, view of this tight couplet here. You said the town, the small community of Lodi right there. And it is uh, continuing off in a, well, I would, I would call that a, an east-northeast direction, not just purely northeast. And sometimes these, and you'll probably see this to hap happen today, uh, the mean storm motion will be up to the northeast. But tornado-producing cells will take a slightly more right track than that, a slightly more eastward rather than northward turn when they are producing. And, and again, we don't know that they are, but that is a fairly significant uh, signature there on this system as it moves right now coming into the vicinity of Glenwood. If Glenwood, all around there, you need to go ahead and be in the tornado safe spot and particularly on to the north up between Norman and Glenwood as it moves off to the northeast. I'm gonna continue to watch the other storms that are up and I'm, and I'm just, folks, I've just got this in velocity mode. I've got this in the mode where we're looking at wind because the rain is a given with these. Heavy rain, there will be some hail along with these as well but I don't see much in the way of rotation with the others. So it's the, the it's this one that we're watching uh, to the west of Glenwood, and, and that is our issue right now that we're looking at. I'm looking at the Hot Springs uh, radar, or the weather cam, rather, and I don't see anything other than it's just very, very dark on out to the west of town there. Uh, but we are watching all of these as they are incoming in and... Uh, Todd, we're waiting for one more scan on that, but that is uh, continues to be very concerning, uh, what we call gate-to-gate -gate shear. So it's very small area, relatively speaking. So that's the what we call the mesocyclone. But within that is the spot where you can have all of that big rotation going into one small area, and that's when the funnel extends down to the ground. That's the setup that you look for, and unfortunately, that's what we're seeing right there. Hopefully this will not exhibit that same rotation as we uh, okay. continue to watch it. Anything new? Yeah, the, uh, even the Weather Service is saying that right now the rotation has broadened out some I, and I would, it's not as agree. intense, but they're not dropping the warning. They're oh, not. no, goodness, no. no. That, that going away from uh, the, the outbound winds may not quite be what they were, and it may be a little bit wider, but that is not reason to let the guard down on this storm no. at all. But it is uh, coming up on... Uh, the northwest, just northwest of Glenwood. So the immediate Glenwood area may not get this. Uh, yeah, it may maybe go just, just to the, to the north. north. Yep. Uh, but uh, I'm concerned again up into Montgomery County as this crosses the county line up towards uh, Williams Branch right there, Williams Ranch and Mazarn up here. Uh, into eastern areas of Montgomery County, there's still significant rotation. And uh, I could take you back in time to, uh, when it really was was going strong. You see that? That at uh, that mm -hmm. was at 1244. It moved. They issued that warning and uh, is going just to the northwest of Glenwood. And it's south of Williams Ranch located here. The uh, the reds and the greens are not right next to each other. The couplet is not very tight, but it is still very evident. If this showed up on the radar suddenly, it would prompt the issuance of a tornado warning. They're not going to drop it, and they shouldn't drop it. But that, just to let you know that it may not, uh, the presentation on radar is not as ominous as it was a little while ago, but we still think a tornado is very possible out of this. And let's go ahead and start con uh, warning everybody in Garland County, including Mountain Pine, uh, even southern areas of Lake Washita, and on the far end of that, hot springs would be in the path of this. So if you have students, uh, or if you're a parent, just sit tight. You know, Barry, that's another thing parents might be doing right now, getting on the road saying, I'm going to go get my kid out of school right now. Yeah, I, I don't think no. that's a good idea. No, I don't think so uh, at, at this point, no. 
uh, these schools okay. are built are built well, and I, that's a good point. Yeah, uh, we have meteorologist James Bryant, who will be in the field this afternoon chasing these storms. Meteorologist James Bryant, where are you, and what do you have? And guys, we're sitting in the Lone Oak right now, and we were just waiting on storms to mature. Unfortunately, it looks like they're getting their act together a little early um, before they get through the metro area. But I just want to speak to the environment that's in place. It's windy. Um, it's been sunny for, for a couple hours. It's getting cloudy now, but it has gotten warm. Temperatures are in the upper 70s to near 80 degrees. Um, and I, I think this is all going to come together rather quickly. We're going to go from not having much to talk about this one storm to maybe several storms. Um, and I think it's going to be an immediate threat to the metro area as this stuff from the southwest moves towards the northeast. It kind of has that classic look of, um, of several days that you can point to. Uh, really, over the past 20 years, storms get their act together over west Arkansas and become a problem um, later on in the state. I, I agree there, and if, if you look at those low clouds like you're, you're showing us there, the low-level clouds are moving at such a rapid rate off to the north, just an indication of, of the, the extreme wind field, even at low elevation, so you can imagine up above, and it's coming from a different spot or a different uh, direction too uh, there, but the humidity levels have really risen, and that's certainly one of the components. We just, uh, I, I don't think these storms that are out by themselves are going to have any trouble going vertical. Yeah, I agree with you, Barry. The um, the storm that is uh, coming close to Glenwood now, I think, um, you know, if it hopefully it hasn't produced a tornado yet, but conditions are only going to get more favorable as we go through the afternoon and the storms move closer to central Arkansas. Um, and so as this gets close to Hot Springs, I, I want to urge everyone in Hot Springs, Mountain Pine, Rockwell, even Lake Hamilton towards the southern section of the tornado warning polygon, Garland County, because you mentioned earlier, these things can take a right turn on days like today and kind of want to be aware of that um, if you're out in front of it. Um, you know, I think I think it's going to be a long afternoon, especially for those of us um, really in the metro area eastward. Uh, this is just the first storm. And, and unfortunately today, um, and you guys can speak to this, I think this storm is going to be around for a long time. Yeah, uh, there it, it's individual, that's for sure. That storm and the one to the north. Uh, there, you can see how the, it's not a complete line. There, it's broken supercellular. So, yeah, this, and there will be more storms, James. And I'm also worried about storms developing out in front of this. Yeah, I am too. I think, um, man, you really, on a lot of our days, the past, really the past several years, we have a lot of rain ongoing out in advance of the storms that usually disrupts updrafts. We saw this this past Friday. A few storms tried to rotate. But then other thunderstorms got involved and, and cut off the inflow region. The inflow region for these storms today is characterized by very warm and humid air, and these storms are moving very quickly. Um, and I think they're going to be able to become efficient tornado producers. And um, and for the immediate threat to Garland County, I, th I think you have to be in a safe place right now. Um, don't wait. They're moving at 60 miles per hour very, very quickly. And... Um, Unfortunately, Todd, I, I think we can go ahead and start talking about this storm possibly impacting the metro area here in just over an hour. Yeah, I think so. Uh, in central Arkansas, for sure, we'll see the exact path it takes. But I'm looking at some of the roads, by the way, as we look at uh, 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 Lone Oak County, but uh, County Road 185, Thunder Road, Thunder Mountain Road, Twin Bridges Road, Mountain View Road, uh, Northern Clay Street and Glenwood. So uh, just some of the locations where the rotation uh, with the current tornado warning storm. We only have one storm at this time that has a tornado warning on it, and this is it. Look uh, at the latest uh, the velocity there, Todd. I, I think it's a lot, I think it's a lot broader than it was. Yeah. And yeah, not I'm as intense it as it was. It. Yes, uh, and it could be cycling. Now that's uh, one other thing. I'm looking at it here, I believe, from the Fort Smith yes. radar, and then you look at it from the Little Rock radar. Right. And yeah, you still see some separation, cattle gap up here. Uh, and then there's Glenwood, so there's a little bit of separation. It's broad here. It's not real close, but it's still there. Uh, and, and Bonnerdale will be another community there, too, but it'll probably go just a little bit north of there. But as James said, if it, if it takes a sudden right turn, then Bonnerdale's in danger. But, you know, I want you to say if you live anywhere in this area of southern and far southeast Montgomery County and east central Montgomery County, don't wait. Now's the time to put as many walls between you and the outside. 
uh, and put many, uh, you know, stay away from windows. You want to go into a, a room that has absolutely no windows. When you look at tornado damage, you, you see all these drone shots of tornado damage. Usually what's standing is an interior room that doesn't have windows. It's the one that has a, a lot of rooms between it and the outside. And that's where you want to go. That's the goal with this. Uh, th that's moving up into Garland County here very, very soon. Mm -hmm. uh, but very, if we get to the end of this tornado warning, which I'm not quite sure how long it is in effect, Effect. Well, they've, uh, uh, it's, a, it's, it's quite a ways on out there because it goes clear to Hot Springs just because of the rapid forward motion. So. It's, yeah, it's, it go, it's going into 115. I, I'm almost guaranteeing if it looks like that on radar at 115, they're going to continue that warning. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Let's, uh, let's take a look here at uh, our, our Max 2, and I, I'm going to back out uh, some for you and just show you the scope of this. And it goes all the way to... Not quite to Hot Springs Village, but into Hot Springs. That's technically the, the watch area. Now, will there be a tornado in this whole area? Absolutely not. But this is the area, and they can, they can take turns, as Todd mentioned. The, right on top of Glenwood, you've got to be in the safe spot right now. And off to the east and just northeast of town. And Mazarn, the small community there, you need to be in your uh, safe spot as well as this moves through that southeastern part of Montgomery County. Now, Garland County... You're next, and the, the area between 270 and 70 will be the area that will be affected by this storm, and hopefully it starts to lose its rotation characteristics. We've already seen it maybe decrease some or broaden some, but this does not mean that there is no threat because there is definitely a threat. I would always have a tornado warning in effect for something that looks like that given the current scans. We'll go back and... Um, I'm going to show you just the reflectivity product there and over the last 30 minutes of what it's been doing. And for right now, you can see up to the north, that's probably a little bit of hail on the north side of where the rotation is. That's very common to be just down to the south. The southern flank of this storm would be where you would see the potential anyway for uh, rotation with it. And that's what we're definitely seeing. I don't want to get so short-sighted that we aren't showing what else is happening because all the way from Russellville and Atkins, the northern Conway County, up into Van Buren County, a severe thunderstorm uh, warning. And also, uh, this storm that's down to the south of Ola right now, uh, let's take a look at that. And I'm, I'm just going to make sure that there isn't any, um, yeah, I don't think there's any great sign of rotation with that. That's good news. But that's a storm that we'll watch, and we'll especially watch those trailing areas of these storms today, those supercells. That's how they present on radar. And I think, unfortunately, I think we're going to see several of those today. If those don't get kind of, uh, if they don't join with other storms where they compete for energy, then they'll be ones that really start to, in, are enhanced and will be long time, long track storms that have the potential. Uh, a lot of times when we have our biggest tornadoes, this is the kind of setup that we have. I don't say that to scare you, I just say that to make you aware that this is that kind of environment. And in eastern Arkansas, there's a whole lot going on in the atmosphere as far as heat and humidity as well. Here is our latest velocity uh, scan. This is the Fort Smith radar that we're showing. It's from the north side of Glenwood on up to the north, kind of a very broad view there, but it's getting a little ways away from, and here is the a Little Rock. That's uh, not as strong looking right there. No, it's a lot more, it's a lot more broad, and you can see the, the outflow uh, portion, although semi-coupled with this, mm -hmm. is not as strong as it was, so the wind's going away. That indicates that the rotation, I don't think, is quite what it was. I hope that is the case. I certainly hope, and I hope subsequent scans show that as well. But if you're in Mazarin right now, or any of this area is southeastern Montgomery County, just go ahead and get into that safe spot. If you've got a storm cellar, that's great. If you don't, it's the lowest floor of your house, the most interior part of your house. Even larger tornadoes can be sur uh, are survivable sometimes in the interior part of your house, a small closet or bathroom away from exterior walls and windows, and certainly the lowest floor of your house. We don't know that this is producing a tornado right now, but there is a tornado warning in effect for this whole area, and it does include hot springs, and that doesn't mean that even though the rotation what it, isn't what it was, that it won't reform and begin to, uh, to produce a tornado again, or if it ever did. 
so we're just going to continue to keep a watch on this storm. And there you can see this storm kind of out by itself, not competing with a lot. I don't think everything in the atmosphere, though, right now is what it will be a little bit later right. on, especially off into the eastern part of the state. Here are some of the towns, by the way, new updated tracks with this moving at 60 miles per hour, Barry. Mazarin at 111. What time is it now? 106. So it's coming up there very, very shortly. Rockwell, 128. Hot Springs at 133. And again, it's 106 right now. Hot Springs Village at about 141. Remember, tornadoes do not travel in straight lines. Tornadoes can vary in speeds on their path. So these are approximate times, they're estimations. Lonsdale at about uh, uh, 147 and Hot Springs Village in Lonsdale outside of that warning polygon. But there it is, it's now north of Glenwood. Glenwood, I want you to stay sheltered because you probably have some very high winds, uh, some inflow from in, into that tornado, but I, I, if there is one right now, but I want you to stay sheltered right now, but it's going just to the north of you and it's, the circulation is in southern Montgomery County now, but uh, we're gonna watch so, uh, southeast Montgomery County now going into uh, Garland County. Will they continue this tornado warning? I'm willing to bet that they do. Uh, it's even though it's not quite as um, strong as it was. They may opt with the severe thunderstorm warning with the tornado tag to it. But um, let me go. I'm sorry, I didn't get all the way over here to this. Uh, there it is. That's the rotation. Highway 8 East. There's Williams Ranch, Norman. That's uh, in Montgomery County and Mazarin right there. So that's the rotation there. It was a lot stronger than this earlier. Uh, so the problem though, with saying, okay, this is over, sometimes these things cycle, uh, where you think it's over and then all of a sudden you get a scan, and you're like, whoa, here we go again. And that's the problem in these environments is that it's still gonna have that ability to, uh, to encounter uh, shear and start to spin once again. Uh, a look here at uh, a live shot out of Hot Springs. Uh, we're looking off towards the west, southwest, and you see very cloudy. You see the rain off in the distance. Uh, Hot Springs, while under that tornado warning right now, uh, it's still a little ways away from you as we gave you those times of arrival, uh, but it, it's, it's coming up pretty close, and it's, it's going to be there within the next 30 minutes at the, very, at the very most. Other thunderstorms, you see these severe thunderstorm warnings up here heading into Clinton, severe thunderstorm warning and also up here coming into, uh, looks like Perry County into Southern Conway County. That's severe. Nothing suggests rotation at this time, but the atmosphere is quite unstable uh, in east, central and eastern Arkansas. And I think once it hits that environment, things are going to strengthen, intensify. Once again, we have what's called a PDS tornado watch in effect for most of the state, which means it's a particularly dangerous situation where we're looking at uh, the threat for uh, long tracked and potentially violent tornadoes, especially in eastern Arkansas when this pulls into that area. All right, let's go back and look at that. Barry may, may be tightened a little bit right there. Uh, we have a little bit of gate to gate shear uh, northeast of Glenwood. Mazarin, take your tornado precautions immediately. This is coming right into town. Let's go right into the city streets. Uh, and remember, it is moving at 60 miles per hour and we're getting updates about one minute, every one or two minutes from the radar. So please keep that in mind when you see where the rotation is. It could be a little bit further towards the northeast. Old Caddo Gap Road, County Road 120. Uh, Campbell Road would be on the north side of that. There's Mountain Home Road and uh, Pigeon Roost Road right here. That's where the tornado, uh, Caddo Pond Road right here. If that's the, the mesocycle in here, there could be a tornado within that area moving up towards the northeast and there's Mazarn. It's moving towards the northeast and most likely right about here now as it moves so quickly and will be in Mazarn here within the next couple of minutes. So we don't want to hear about any reports of anybody getting hurt, but I'm feeling we're going to have some damage in and around this community. Some trees down, power lines down. I think that's very likely with this. I'm going to have to check the number of power outages, but Barry, I, I think it has increased its circulation uh, a little bit. And that tornado warning, which expires at 115, will likely be issued even further along until about two o'clock at the at the least at the very least and as james uh, bryant just told us a little while ago this may be the storm to watch here in the metro later this afternoon mm -hmm. when the schools are letting out that causes a lot of problems people think i'm gonna run get my kid now uh, i'm gonna get them home and the traffic jams the last thing you want to do is be on the roads in this many of the schools and i'm sure you know this already have storm shelters specifically designed for these situations where they're safe. 
uh, and, and that's our number one priority. We don't want you out on the road. That's the last place you want to be when this happens. But Barry, that has increased, and I'm, I'm concerned. I haven't looked at the uh, the debris. I, I haven't Nothing seen yet. anything there uh, mm -hmm. specifically. No, no, I haven't either. But it's it's paralleling Highway 70 right it is. here, coming right up <clears throat> towards 227. Mazarn, I, I just got a feeling something may be on the ground with this, Barry. Yeah, it's it's at least possible. Here's what I, I'm looking at, and uh, one thing that may prevent us from seeing this storm. You can see the radar site here is now looking through quite a lot of rain, a, a big rain shield, and there's the rotation. So it's uh, it could be being blocked a little bit, attenuated, we call it, because it's hitting so many raindrops uh, on its way out to see the storm that it could be weakening this. But uh, in any event, we're watching that. We're also watching the one up out to the southwest of Perryville. It has that same supercellular characteristic kind of out by itself. I don't see any rotation with it, but Perryville just know that we are watching this storm, and so is the National Weather Service. Let's go to, uh, and we're waiting for the next scan here, but uh, for right now, that area around Mazarn, and as Todd said, paralleling Highway 70. This is the inbound wind a large inbound wind field, but there is an outbound wind field right there. Where those two come together would be the area where winds are rapidly changing with, uh, they're changing direction with distance. So you've got a very small area there that will continue to move up into, and this is Garland County over here. Again, we get so hyper-focused on this because we want folks to be aware of where the rotation is, but uh, also we do like to back out and show you kind of the whole scope of this. It's a long time until, relatively a long time, until it gets to that 270, uh, there's 70 right there, until it gets into the west side of Hot Springs. But out on Lake Hamilton, it'll be, uh, I think Todd showed 133 in Hot Springs, but earlier than that, out on the west side of town. And this is the one that is rotating right now. We don't see others that are. I'm gonna just pull it back up here into uh, Perry County. Uh, nope, not much in the way of rotation there. And then we'll watch also the one that is in Conway County up into Clinton. And we'll go, uh, I want to go back and, okay, they've re, reconfigured the tornado warning now. Yeah, they got a new one that they just issued. Yeah, and it includes Hot Springs. It will include the west side of Hot Springs Village as well. And it is a little more uh, to the right, that right moving aspect. So it's not so much northeast, but kind of east-northeast in its orientation. And uh, I don't know what the, what is the forward speed on East that? East at 50. East at 50. So, well, it's probably just barely, um, hang on here. I'm going to clear that out. Uh, it's probably moving just north of east, but it's going to be very close, a lot more east than it is northeast, I think, now. All right, uh, Barry, I'm going to put a track on this if it's moving okay. north, northeast at 50. Uh, are you doing a track on yeah, it? Yeah, I've got you, it Okay, there. go ahead. Go ahead. Channel Hot Springs now 135, so it's it's lining up about where it was. I've just got it from the locate the uh, rotation part there, uh, where it is, and and I may have started it just a little. So let's just back off a couple of minutes on those. Again, that 130 or so at Hot Springs, uh, Magnet Cove, Haskell, Benton would be eventually in the track of this storm, but that's going to be at about the two o'clock hour or just afterwards. So. Uh, it's, it's going to be paralleling, paralleling Highway 70, which runs kind of east-northeast up toward Hot Springs, Todd. All right. Can we, just for a brief moment, don't take the audio on this. I haven't checked the audio. Storyteller, uh, got video here from Jeff. Can we take Storyteller? This comes to us from Jeff Marker. Okay, so uh, this is uh, out of Mountain Harbor, which was with the, he was working a crossword puzzle and captured this on video. Uh, and if, I'm not quite sure if we can go to Storyteller or not. Just go ahead, and it's about a 14-second long video. Uh, it's up there. Do not take the audios. We've continued to track this potential tornado through eastern areas of Montgomery County moving into Garland County. Then I want to share some thoughts about that. that with the There's a lightning area. strike. Yeah, it is, and I just that. wanted yeah. to get that up. There it is. Uh, just hold on. He's going to put the camera. Watch what happens. This is why we tell you not to be outside. Watch this. See that pine tree? Watch this. Here it comes. Yeah, that... Obviously shook him. Don't don't go outside. Uh, so there's a lot of dangers besides just tornadoes with that. And of course, you see there 
Barry on the side there. They're watching Channel 7, so that's good. So stay inside, folks. Yeah. All right, let's go back to this tornado warned storm. And again, safely send pictures and video. Don't do that, though, uh, after the fact. Barry, uh, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself with this as this moves towards Hot Springs. We mm -hmm. have our Hot Springs camera, which I think is going to be very useful in this. But I don't like the way when you look at the radar here, there's nothing in front of it. Yeah. There's nothing south of it. And then you have Little Rock. You have Benton. You have Bryant. I'm very worried that this storm is going to be one of those long-lasting supercells. Yeah. And I'm very concerned that this does affect the Little Rock metro area. Yeah, I think that is that is the one uh, probably that will. And yeah. Uh, just looking at it, again, there is rotation with it, and I don't know that it's as strong as we've seen, but this is a supercell in it, and I don't think there's anything to really destroy this storm. No, there uh, isn't. That's the problem. Yeah, that's the thing. It's it's uh, There's a lot out in advance of it all the way up to the Little Rock area here that if you, if you think about this being the big thunderstorm here, it's it's by itself. It doesn't have any competition, and there's a lot of wind energy. Now, as it gets over here, closer to I-30 and eastward, it may be a little bit warmer there. Uh, I think there's been probably a little more, not only time for south winds to warm things up and humidify, destabilize the atmosphere, but also it's just been a little less cloudy than it's been uh, with the just the cloud cover of this moving off. So in the Little Rock area, this is the one I think that we're, we're going to watch. We're watching obviously all of the storms though, and uh, the one up, uh, one on up to the north, I think the Clinton or the Van Buren County one, I think has been allowed to expire, but the one southwest of Perryville. They're going to be issuing a tornado warning on that for Perryville here. Okay. So very soon. All right. Here so we let's go, go let's go to the velocity product on that if we can. And uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're going to issue on that near Casa and Applin. Yep. I think that's that's the area that we're going to be looking at. This is uh, winds going away from and some coming toward the radar site there, so that will be the next one. Um, Adana will be uh, coming up, and then Perryville, again, we said that we would be watching it, and you're gonna be uh, most likely within this new tornado warning that will be issued there. Yeah, uh, they just said in, in with our chat that they're gonna be issue a tornado warning for that, which will include uh, Perryville most likely. Um, let me just look here in the chat, Barry. Yeah. We'll be issuing a tornado warning shortly, uh, closely watching the storm near Perryville. So uh, you're about to see here on the radar behind me, uh, you're about to see a, tornado, a new tornado warning, the logo pop up here, but this is the one here near Applin, uh, and that's going to affect potentially areas around Pettigene, to Morlton, and uh, Quesa, Perryville. And again, we're waiting for that to be issued. Um, also, Barry, wanted to tell you that our partner over at Live Storms Media, Brett Adair, is on I-40, 60 miles to the east of Little Rock, there's the new tornado warning, and he's going to be in position to track the storm right here on Channel 7 as it moves into the Little Rock metro area. There's the tornado warning. This does include Moralton, Oplo, and Perryville. Uh, does not include Plummerville just yet on I-40, but it does take into account a portion of I-40. So there's the new tornado warning, and that's the potential uh, right there on the radar. Uh, this is not that far from the radar, so as we zoom into Applin and look at the debris signatures, there's a debris signature there, Barry. Yeah. Uh, it, let me see if it matches up first. It may, not 100% sure on that, but there could be some well, sort of debris signature. Well, let's that. just say that that is, uh, that is a tornado. It, it, again, there is some, I think there's some attenuation of the beam. There the might beam, be. I think, is getting uh, eaten up a little bit. But I, I would say, folks, along, that's Highway 60 right there and headed over to Perryville. And just go ahead and take cover if you're in that corridor. And this is, uh, this is Highway 10 just up to the north. So there's kind of a ridge in between those two highways there. This will be closely paralleling that area if you're in Perryville right now. If you're in Perry, eventually on down the road, this storm will be moving up uh, your way. And so this, this is one that we're going to be watching. And we'll also keep a close watch. Uh, there's a lot of inbound wind on this one now coming into southwest Garland County. This is right along Highway 70 here. The rotation part would be just to the north, kind of a broad outflow. And uh, the inflow is rather broad as well. But that is a tornado-worn storm. And if you're in that area, out, this is well out to the west of Hot Springs still. Uh, this is moving at about 50 miles per hour. We're going to go, I'm going to go back just the reflectivity part of this and where you just, I just never want to see storms that have those little tails on them uh, like the one out 
by Perryville there, that, that little uh, tail that appendage that hangs back uh, on the back side of these storms. You don't, you don't want to see those. You don't want to see them out by themselves. And yet, that's sort of what we're seeing so far here. We'll also watch this area out in advance of it from Searcy to Carlisle, Little Rock, all the way down to Pine Bluff, Redfield, Little Rock. We'll watch that for other storms that could develop in advance of that. Todd, I think that's at least a possibility mm -hmm. uh, later on today. This is, a, this is certainly not a line, but they're, uh, they're in a broken area. They're kind of lined up there, but we don't want to see anything out in advance. But uh, it very well could be that these are the, the parent ones that will be on the that will be capable of producing tornadoes for hours to come. Just to let you know, I've been talking, uh, uh, texting with a meteorologist who's a guru with, uh, when it comes to radar analysis. He doesn't think that that is a debris signature uh, near Appland, but we're gonna have to watch that very closely. And this is the, uh, uh, the circulation here coming in, uh, it looks like into Rockwell, into far southwestern areas of Garland County. We're watching this for you in Hot Springs continued area of uh, circulation with this. Now, Mazarn, you're in the clear with this, still technically under a tornado warning, but the circulation with this is just a couple of miles towards your east. Just stay hunkered down for a little bit longer. That's getting get, be getting into the, hot, um, the outskirts of Hot Springs very, very soon, Barry, with the- Very uh, near, very near Piercy. Piercy, that's right, Piercy's out and in that, that area. Would, uh, uh, Lake Hamilton High School. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you're in that area and just to the, especially just to the north. Here's some of the roads here. Uh, there's Piercy down here at the bottom of your screen right there. Piercy Mount Road, Old Dallas Road. There's Chandler, uh, Old Dallas Road up here towards the north. Uh, Pinecone Road, that's where the, the circulation's over and it's going to be crossing over 227. We have our Hot Springs camera and Barry, I don't have the ability to rotate that thing around. If uh, I'll, do. Uh, I'll do it, I'll keep a close watch on it. Yeah, you can definitely, uh, if we could bring that up, it, it's, um, are we going to be able to get a good, I think we should be able to get a good sight of this. If it, let me see how the I'm rain gonna, looks like. I'm just going to show you, uh, There's rain there. can we take a, if we could take that or, or if Todd, if you could put it in front of Todd, yeah, Todd, it, I yeah, just want I you got to, it. I've got it right now. Notice a couple of features, uh, on that. Look at that. Yeah. I, I saw just lightning. That's a look from hot springs right now. Yeah. Uh, and again, I don't have the ability to move that around, uh, well, right now, but you're seeing quite a bit of lightning. That's the, that's the storm. And I think. Uh, if we move it much more to the right, we're going to get into the tower there. But yeah, yeah, you're probably right. But um, it is, uh, I would say that it is almost due west. So I'm going to move it just a little bit more. And we also have meteorologist James Bryant, who's on the phone right now. I don't know if he can chime in with his thoughts as he's out uh, waiting for this to come into central Arkansas. Uh, James, are you there? All right, we may not have meteorologist James Bryant. Okay. Yeah, James, um, what, are, what are you uh, seeing right now? I'm, I'm very concerned about this moving into uh, central Arkansas now with this storm that's bearing well, down on the hot springs. I, I, since I'm sitting here on the east side of the metro area, I'm, I'm going over the radar data with the fine tooth comb. I'm, I'm really watching um, for signs as these storms get closer to the area of debris signatures. I would say that the, uh, the signature west of Perryville uh, just looking at it on reflectivity, uh, you kind of almost see a little hole in the reflectivity. And a lot of times yes. that leads you to believe that you do have something on the ground. There is a debris detector correlation coefficient drop out there at that exact spot, uh, both at 120. So it was about four minutes ago on the radar data. So I do think it's very possible that even though there's not much, um, it's not very strong velocity, I do think we could have a tornado on the ground there northwest of Perryville or west of Perryville. Yeah, I think so too, James. I think that's uh, an area that if we can go back to me, uh, you'll see that that's our Hot Springs camera, but on computer number two, uh, there you can see it's now between right. Highway 60 and Highway 10, kind of moving up across that area, that area between those two highways as it moves toward Perryville and Williams Junction there, um, moving with, uh, well, that's out to the west of town here, but we're nine and 10. Uh, break off there at Perry. Uh, I think that is going to be an area that we're going to have to watch. So if you're in that area, a lot of wind going away from the radar site, some coming back in there. But as James mentioned, if you just look at reflectivity with this, there, um, not so much now, but certainly there's that tail, but there was sort of a hole indicating that rain was wrapping around a rotation center. 
So that's uh, what we're, we're looking at. We're, you always look at the storm, the kind of the core of the rain, maybe some hail, and then the tail of the storm. And that's where it would be, uh, nearing Highway 10 right now. Do we have some video, Todd? Yeah, on Storyteller, let's go to, uh, this is, just came into us from Chime In from Bonnerdale. So that's looking off towards the west. I don't see a circulation with this. That would, uh, it looks like some ominous looking clouds from Jamie uh, Balky uh, in the Bonnerdale area. It's on Storyteller, and you'll see the low ring there. Uh, this was just video into us. It looks like a ragged cloud base. Don't yeah. see anything spinning necessarily, but yeah. It's hard to tell, though, with this video, but just from first glance and what I'm looking at, Barry, uh, in that direction where the tornado warning storm is, I don't see anything spinning. But uh, safely, safely send pictures. But let's go back to the radar uh, and, and get back to this uh, potential tornado that's uh, moving into the hot springs area yeah. you need to be sheltered right now i'm going to look look go back go if we can go back to that and todd i just want you to take a look at the hot springs camera again I'm going back to it and look right over your right shoulder there this uh, yeah that's beyond the hill there yeah but uh, it's almost due west that we're looking and that's where the rotation still is it would be in that area there's a new south of warning. 270 and north of 70 and i think I think there is a lowering of the cloud base right there off of your right arm. Right, right here is what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, and that just up over the over the hill there, you can kind of see there's a little bit of a shelf, just a little bit of a lowering, and I'm I'm, uh, and it still shows up on radar as well. New tornado warning now in effect for Cleburne, Conway, Stone, Van Buren County until 2 p.m. moving to the northeast at 40 miles per hour. Uh, that's a new tornado warning that just came in. I'm going to continue to watch this in Hot Springs, Barry. Yeah. Uh, if you, and you've got that uh, new tornado warning right now. Yeah, I'll show you that one. And uh, this is on up into northern Arkansas. And Choctaw along Highway 65 and Clinton are included in this new tornado warning. But this is the wind field. And again, we're looking at winds going away from and uh, coming toward the radar site, wrapping around a circulation center there as it enters into Van Buren County. This would be the extreme northern part of Conway County along Highway 9 and moving up to the northeast. So, and, and again, a lot of these could be a little bit right movers. Uh, so we're looking at that area. If you're in around Choctaw or down Highway 9, um, also I guess this is 336 that winds around through the southern part of Van Buren County. Anywhere in there, you need to go ahead to get to that lowest spot in your house. Let's take a look at this storm on, if we can, on uh, just reflectivity and yes, Definitely so. It's, it's another one of these storms that you look at it and then it has this tail on the back end of it. It's out by itself and I think all of these storms will have the potential to produce a tornado. So that's why we were watching all of these storms. There are about three supercells now in the state and it may or may not be producing a tornado but in this environment let's just, let's just act like it is. And you can go ahead and take cover with that, leave it right here and we'll continue to watch these storms. Um, also, the one that is now out to the west of Perry and along Highway 10. Oh boy, look at this. There's another. Is, is that beginning to rotate? It's coming over the, no, I'm just looking at over the hill. I'm sorry, I'm saying out loud, but you can yeah, see this. Yeah, look that's at this the Bezos the cyclone that Todd has oh, out to the west of Hot Springs. Let's go to the right hot, there. Uh, there it is, there it is. This is what's coming into Hot Springs right now. Yeah. Uh, and it's gonna be coming over that hill. We should be able to get a better look at this storm and uh, hope as it comes over that hill, and I, I sure hope it's not putting down a tornado. Uh, but you'll see that lightning flashing up. But that, that's the circulation, isn't it, Barry? That's the mezzo. Oh, yeah, and yeah. it, it matches mm -hmm. exactly to where it is. It, and it is, uh, again, uh, Thornton Ferry Road. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. that is absolutely it. So those, those areas out there along the west end of Lake Hamilton are going to be right there. There's Thornton Ferry Road as it comes off of 270. And so you're going to start to get into the area of, of the lake right there. But there's, there's that broad circulation between 270 and 70, so it's in between the two and moving, uh, I would say not exactly east, probably east-northeast, but eventually it's gonna be moving in, and I, we'll go even tighter in on that. Um, uh, yeah, there's some other roads that we're looking at, Miles Clearcut Road, Timberlake Drive, Rock Creek Road, Lakeshore Road, all within there, and you can, you can start to see all of those little neighborhoods there getting into a much more populated area as it moves in. That's the rotation. Red, 
uh, to the bright uh, blues and greens there, and that's where there is at least broad rotation. And we have seen that. And Todd, it continues. Pike County, new tornado warning coming. White County? Pike, P I K E. Oh, Pike. Pike. Yeah, Pike. Okay, County. yes. That is the other storm, but uh, Hot Springs. And everybody to the west end of Hot Springs, you need to be in that safe spot right now. There's the latest uh, one, and the away and the toward may have jogged a little bit to the north there, but it'd be coming up along Highway 270 uh, corridor, uh, more so than the 70 corridor, but it's kind of in between the two as it moves off. And, Todd, uh, you can... Uh, let me let me go ahead before we go, and I'll and I'll show you. Well, the the they Pike County storm yet, but it's is down here, Glenwood, Daisy, but it it's coming on down uh, there it on is. that storm. There you it is, it. right there. There's the new tornado, new tornado warning, Glenwood. Yeah, and it will include Glenwood. And here's what the storm looks like. Again, shocker, all by itself out there, uh, yep. as all of these storms have been so far. So if you're in that area, Daisy up to Glenwood, it's time to get into the safe spot. Uh, this will be moving out of Pike County and eventually then moving up um, part of southeastern Montgomery County in this and also Garland County will be within this and northwest Hot Spring County. So it's the next storm on down. I want to give that overview, but I want to send it back to Todd because, Todd, that area is uh, really approaching now our uh, our camera on West Mountain. Yeah, it is. Let's go to the, this is a. Uh uh, again, the lowering here, and we're watching for a potential tornado with this. This you're looking live in Hot Springs. If there's a tornado, it's somewhere in here, and it's being obstructed by this hill. But that's the lowering. Uh, we're hopefully going to have a little bit better visibility of this. Is there any way to move this a little bit right? Now, as you said, Barry, it may be that the tower might get in the way. Uh, but, yeah, that's there's good. right. But Thank you. Yeah. That's I, a little better right there coming over the mountain there. That's, so that's due west. And that's the potential, that's the lowering. Uh, you're going to start to see this kind of revolving around. We're going to see, hopefully we will not see anything extending to the ground. No. Once this, uh, we get a little better visibility. But you can, obviously you can't, you can't see anything because the hill is in the way uh, where the base is right back in there. But uh, we're looking for any appendages, anything that would show that there is a tornado there. Uh, obviously look at the winds, just really strong out in front of this. Uh, circulation. It does have a tornado warning on it. It's one of the stronger circulations we have in the state right now. Also, uh, that uh, tornado warning, uh, just to go over this while we keep an eye on this, tornado warnings continue. Although the one in Perry County, Barry, does not look as strong as it was it coming doesn't. up on Moralton. No. Uh, but the one coming up just south of Clinton, uh, what is that, Highway 65, just south of Clinton, this looks like it's coming up on that. But uh, we have a visual on this one here. Um, Barry, what do you make of all this? Uh, well, I mean, there's a lot of turbulence there. You yeah. can see the bumpy nature of those clouds. Maybe even earlier, I think we saw some modest clouds, which are a sign of severe weather. And um, that, that yeah, if you could time really lapse shaking. that, you would see those those clouds are, are moving at a pretty rapid rate. Uh, the, what we're seeing, they'd be moving left to right there, kind of an, at the leading edge of this. But uh, hopefully we see nothing extending to the ground. Obviously, the hill obscures our view, but that is the lowering that you looked for and part of a storm, and from that, you can see uh, perhaps something. And I'm, I'm looking at the rotation with that. Obviously, if you're in Hot Springs, it, you need to be in that safe spot right now. Yeah. Yeah, and I hope we've you made go that Go ahead and warn them. I'll keep an eye on that camera. If I see anything, I'll yell at you. Okay, right there, out to the west of town, uh, along Highway 270. That's the appendage hanging down there. That's the rotating part of a supercell thunderstorm, and that's exactly what we're seeing. I'm watching it as well. Uh, the National Weather Service, let me see if they're saying anything. Um, yeah, we're just, they're watching the one in Pike County, too. And I don't want to, I don't want to uh, not cover the other ones. But for right now, the one in Perry County uh, near Apollo, still a tornado warning on that. Looks like the rotation might be just down to the south of Moralton near Apollo. There is one that is on up to the north of there. And we're going to see a very near Choctaw right now. That would be an area, perhaps, that has some rotation with it. Look, this is really moving very, very quickly uh, right there. Uh, and we'll go to the velocity product with that. And, yes, right along Highway 9, just coming up on Choctaw, which is just to the south of Clinton, that rotation has tightened up considerably right paralleling mm -hmm. Highway 9 as it moves toward the Highway 65 corridor. If you're in that corridor right there, Choctaw on the south side of Clinton, get into your safe spot. It would eventually move on up to, toward Fairfield Bay 
or perhaps just south of there, but you're in the tornado warned area. So go ahead and take cover with that storm. We don't want to, uh, we, we want to look at all of these storms though. Uh, again, the one near Perry and then the one coming into Hot Springs right now. Can you go over to the Hot Springs camera now? Yep. And I've got, I've been watching it. It looks like rain coming over there and you see yep. the, the waves of rainfall coming. I don't know if we, if we pan left, I think that we're just going to see a lot of rain, but you can see how all that rain, the motion into it yep. uh, from the, uh, from the left side of the screen to the right side. You're and look at the wind. I mean, it's, this circulation is coming right over our camera. Uh, and, and you're, if there's a tornado, this camera may be in it. Uh, just, just watch as it's coming across do right now. Do we want now. to broaden it out maybe? A, yeah, do we have that ability? I'm touch. not sure if it's out all the way. I'm trying to get my desk out of the way here so we can see that the That is as thing. much as it zooms out. That's it. Um, so we'll, we'll continue to watch that. I will tell you, though, while we're watching that, if we can go back, I, I just want to show you the rotation. It has been, if anything, I think it's maybe a little tighter than it was. The one over Garley County? Yeah, and yeah. it's just out to the west of Hot Springs now. So, uh, folks, if you're out here, 227 comes in and joins 270 out to the west of town. That would be the area right there. Our camera is, uh, it's somewhere right about here out uh, to the west of town. But uh, the, the circulation may very well go just barely north of that. Uh, but if you're in that area or along Highway 128 headed up to, to Fountain Lake, uh, just go ahead and get in your safe spot. I promise you, you will not be there long. These are fast moving storms. If you're in Hot Springs, go ahead and get in your safe spot. South of Hot Springs, I don't see a lot in the way of rotation there. And hopefully we won't, but there's a lot of inbound wind coming in right there. Uh, not far from the airport, Todd, maybe just on the north side of the airport. Yeah, I just moved that camera, I believe a little bit toward, we're looking towards the north and you see that base there. Yeah. That, so if, if there is a tornado, it's gonna come right in through here. So I just moved that to the other side of the tower. Yeah. Uh, but I just don't see anything. The uh, uh, visibility is absolutely horrible with heavy rainfall. All you see is the, the heavy, heavy rain. Take cover, hot springs. And this is the storm that will affect Little Rock most likely. All right, so we're gonna keep an eye on that. Let's go back to the radar. Uh, we're again near Choctaw, as Barry was telling you, Highway 65 uh, near Clinton, just south of Clinton. Up here, tornado warn, seek shelter immediately. And the one that's coming into the metro area, our meteorologist uh, and, and partner Brett, a new tornado warning that does include Benton uh, and Fountain Lake. It includes Saline County, not, uh, not uh, it's just the central portion of Saline County. So a new tornado warning, and it, it does clip, very important. It clips a little bit of Pulaski County, barely anything. So just remember, if you hear sirens further away, uh, the, the tornado warning is just for a far western end of, of uh, Pulaski County, but I think it will be issued for Pulaski County with this. This is going to be a long track supercell thunderstorm, and this is going to move into the Little Rock metro area. But this is a new tornado warning, which is uh, the one we're following in Hot Springs. This is the one that we have live for you in Hot Springs that will be moving into western Pulaski County, central Saline County, and into western Pulaski County. West Little Rock, Maumelle, Ferndale. All those locations and all those communities in the western end of the county, don't wait. Now is the time to act, and we want you to, uh, to know where you're going to go if a tornado hits. And we're going to track this as it comes by, minute by minute, uh, and street by street as this comes across. Now, Barry? I'm, I'm going to go a little bit right with that uh, Hot Springs camera. How go about? right, go right, and I'll get out of the way here. And uh, I think the rotation that I've seen may be just... Uh, uh, moving up to the north side of town there Boy, would be very difficult to see Boy, that's that would be it if it's there if, if there was one yeah I, I think I think so as well uh, we're looking almost due north now we're looking down into hot springs that's the valley that you see there although you can't make out anything and I think from our camera and where that's looking if there was rotation with it it would be off in the distance there maybe just on the north side of town uh, moving on up to the northeast for him to be on the air. That is the storm that we're, we're really looking at, but I do wanna, I don't want, uh, wanna get away from our radar product because we can see it a lot better there, but this is moving toward Fountain Lake right now. Uh, a lot of inbound wind with this storm, so it's windy in Hot Springs. There's outbound though, and there is along Highway 128 right there. That is uh, where the, the two uh, bright colors there would come together. If there is something, it would be within that area, and that's the one that will move on off to the northeast. Uh, let's go on down and I'll show you uh, 
on down into the Glenwood area right now. There is a, a tornado warning as well. It's this storm right here, and Amity uh, would be near where that tail end is. So along the road between uh, Glenwood and Amity, 182, and on the south side of Highway 70. Remember, the, this one just tracked to the north side. This will be along the south side. If you're in that area, you need to take cover right now. And this would be, I, I think this is, could be Highway 84 moving on down to Amity right there. Through that corridor, that's where you need to take cover. So I'm telling you, because there are so many, we have, we have to cover all of these. Right now, uh, the Fountain Lake area, that's where you need to take cover in advance of this storm. The north side of this uh, storm, Velocity product still shows the rotation uh, maybe a little more broad. Go ahead. Uh, we have meteorologist James Bryant who has some info. Okay, James. Hey, guys. I, I think we're starting to get uh, what may be a tornado debris signature there on the north side of Hot Springs, and, and that is looking uh, from the Little Rock radar site. Uh, you may want to check the debris detector and just see. I think we may have had one in the radar scan about five minutes ago. It looked pretty, mm -hmm. uh, pretty consistent there on the north side. Yeah, just south of uh, Fountain Lake is where it's showing up now, and, and yeah. Look at this yeah. uh, image of it I got on on the hot springs camera look at that base hot springs camera james i don't know if you can see i doubt you can see this i'm delayed i'll get it there it is barry you see it uh-huh I, I see the debris signature on the radar the yeah the debris signature went right over uh highway 270 and 227 which goes up to mountain pine and then it moved north of hot springs Oh, up to 128, and it's very near Fountain Lake right now. If you're in the Fountain Lake vicinity, you've got to take cover. Which direction are you looking there, Todd? That, I moved it to the right a little bit, so I think oh, I'm almost Oh, it's looking off north. to the northeast, so yes. North, northeast, yes. That so is the storm. Yep. If you go back a little bit left of that, you'd be, you'd be pointing right at Fountain Lake. That gonna, is the mesocyclone. Folks, I'm going back into the uh, weather center here, and I'm going to move this to the left a little bit. Folks, that is the storm that's coming toward Little Rock. There it is. Yeah. That's that, the, the lowering. That's what a supercell looks like, and that's the lowering of the cloud base. And there apparently has been a tornado because we're seeing a debris signature within that. It's not as wide as that whole storm is. It is coming from that uh, storm, and that is the mesocyclone part of the storm uh, that has lowered. When you see something lowering like that halfway down to the ground, that is where tornadoes, uh, that's where they are produced. Um, I'm zooming and, in on it. There's the mountain tower. Do you see that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and everything in advance of that then. So we're going to be looking on out in advance of this storm. But um, I can't tell if there's it, it. It looks like there's some rain there. So it's hard to tell if there's anything on the ground. Yeah, but there there has been some debris because uh, if we can show if we can come to me just one second, keep it right there, Todd, and let me know if you okay. see anything. If you can come to me, I'm going to show you the debris detector right there, a little dropout in what is just generally a uniform raindrops. There is something other than raindrops being pulled into that, and that's right now. But I'm going to go back in time, and I'm going to show you how it moved from, you can kind of see it right there, and it will move right up to Fountain Lake as I go back in time. That was at 129, and you can see that dropout moving right up along 128. Now, the latest uh, one doesn't have that dropout like it did. Uh, well, I'm going to take that as a good sign, but I'm not going to take that as there is nothing left in that storm because I think it's still uh, a, a rotating storm, and there you can see the rotation aspect, but it correlates exactly to where the reds and the greens came together, the correlation coefficient there, and that is that debris detector that we're looking for, and it will move up along Highway 128, and uh, so into that corridor that will take it up into the, north, uh, the western and northwestern part of Saline County. If you're along any of those roads right there, Hot Springs Village, you're north of the circulation center, uh, but there, the roads out to the east and southeast of you, from Fountain Lake on to the east, uh, that is where we're going to be looking along Highway 5 and then points up to the, to the north of there. Uh, so that is the storm. Anything that you can see that it's still a, a formidable yeah, looking storm very, with lowering there, Todd. Fairfield Bay, take tornado precautions immediately. Yeah. Uh, look at that. 
Fairfield Bay, there's significant rotation there. Shirley is just past Clinton 65. Yep. Fairfield Bay needs to be sheltered. And even areas around Greer's Ferry, the community northward. Uh, that's another tornado warned storm. You need to put as many walls between you and the outside. There's a potential tornado with that. Let's look again. This is a, a pretty good distance away from the radar. And I just lost uh, my connection with the laptop. Uh, uh, yeah, there's no, I got it. I got it now. No so apparent look, debris there, but no, no, no apparent debris. But, but I want to uh, go back to that. I, I would say there could be very well be something there. Yeah, just to, to be on the safe side. I just noticed that signature there south of Shirley going over Fairfield Bay right now. Stay sheltered right now. Keep the kids in class and uh, or rather in, in their sheltered area at school. Uh, let's go back here. It, it looks like they have dropped the tornado warning on the storm that was rotating uh, out to the east of Apollo. Okay, good. And Plummerville and Menifee, those areas right now, still a, a severe thunderstorm warning, but I believe that tornado warning. This is moving quickly, this one in Salt. Yeah. Uh, and it's go over Fountain Lake. Let's uh, go back to the, uh, look and see what we have. There's the lowering still persists, but the visibility is, is obscured. That's moving towards the northeast and away from the camera now. But if there's a tornado, you see that's the lowering and you will never be able to see without uh, any sort of confidence with the right. terrain and the, and the rain between there. But if there's a tornado, that's exactly where it is. It's now moving away from Hot Springs uh, in a, right over Fountain Lake. The Weather Service has said that there was a debris signature with that for five mm -hmm. to seven minutes. It's the one that I showed you, and then I showed you that there was none. It quit being detected. But boy, that's always what we want to see. We want to see these things, uh, but there's still rotation with this storm. And let me just get a little more specific on, on these uh, highways out here. I'm going to go right into Owensville right there. If you've been along and Crows, this uh, will be moving right up through that area. And this is on the east side of, of uh, Hot Springs Village, Ponce de Lon Drive, Balearic Drive, or Road, rather. This, this rotation center moving just kind of toward the east gate of Hot Springs Village. Uh, again, there is no indication of debris with this, but that doesn't mean that it's not producing uh, some sort of rotation or funnel or a tornado as it moves up through there. So this is, is what we're going to be looking at. Again, the east side of Hot Springs Village is where those that area is. And if you are trying to look outside and see it, you're not going to see it. So go to the safe spot in your house all along the highway there. I'm going to go in even a little bit tighter if we can. And... Uh, yeah, you'll see, that is, that's the area, Copperhead Road, Cougar Lake Road, uh, Devon Lane, Roxanne Road as well, and all of them are right there on the east side and then toward Owensville. So if you're in that area, I know a number of uh, homes there. I don't think the rotation away from the radar site looks quite what it was. The rotation toward does, but this is a tornado-worn storm, and it's the one that we've already had visual confirmation that it wasn't just the cloud base of the supercell, but it had a lowering of part of that. And that's the mesocyclone, the, the mid-scale rotation. That is where tornadoes are produced. And we saw it exactly where those two were coming together. Todd, any other news on any of those other storms? No, but I want to let Alicia know that I've got a couple new images there of uh, the lowering that came out of that area uh, near Piercy. Uh, but also public reports, uh, half-inch size hail near Glenwood and uh, out there in Clark County, but that, that has gone off in the distance. But uh, th that debris signature, as you said, uh, was there, and I'm getting reports as well, and I'm going to just stay with me here, of uh, power outages where that debris signature was confirmed, and this is the storm that's heading for Little Rock. It's heading for the Little Rock metro area. There are pow power outages, I'm looking on the Entergy map, where this tracked just to the west of the center of Hot Springs uh, a large power outage near Piney, uh, and that's uh, Albert Pike Road, just to the west of Hot Springs. There's a large power outage, and that is uh, that happened at 1:23, which pretty much lines up with when that uh, tornadic circulation passed over that area. So I'm pretty sure we've had another tornado here in Arkansas. Watching that as it moves towards the metro area uh, very soon. Uh, let's hope that this does not. Um, uh, last and it disrupt, gets disrupted somehow, but I'm not sure that that's going to happen because there's nothing in front of this to stop this uh, from, from plowing right through the central Arkansas area. And so I want to urge everybody who's watching us from, from Little Rock, uh, this is, please start to, to watch this storm. 
I think we're going to be put under a tornado warning in the Little Rock metro area uh, before too long. I hope I'm wrong. But yeah. by looking at this, uh, it's, uh, it seems to get stronger. It gets weaker. Let's go look at it right now in its current form. Getting into Saline County now. It's, the, it's, it's along Highway the 5 there between Benton and Hot Springs Village, Todd. Yeah, and just north of Lonsdale. Let's go back into this. It's going to go just to the north of Benton. Uh, there's Lonsdale there. That's the circulation. There's Fountain Lake. There's Hot Springs. We were looking at the backside of that a little while ago. Uh, and it, Highway 5 is very just said is where it's going to get ready to cross. That's it right there. At 151, you're watching this live, a potential tornado just to the north, northwest of Lonsdale. Uh, what about debris? Uh, we had that debris signature earlier. Uh, I don't see anything uh, with, with that. Maybe, but it just yeah, a, maybe the, the circulation was a little bit further towards the west. Yeah, not sure so it doesn't lines quite up. line up. That may not be that. Yeah, it doesn't line up. But is this image? Uh, is, it, is is that image? It did that might just too. come in, and the other one's lagging. That's yeah. The, that might be it now because there's the updated image. It doesn't look like though that it's a very strong gate-to-gate uh, -gate shear with this. No, but I'm, I'm just afraid that it's looking, the radar is looking through the rain part of that storm and it's attenuating somewhat. And right along Highway uh, 5 there at Owensville, I okay. think. Okay, look at this, Barry. So I'm gonna go back in time to when we saw that debris signature. You yeah. see it there just east of Fountain Lake and then watch as it comes across. So going over 298 right now. That may be it, east of Fountain Lake, uh, some sort of debris signature. There's 298, there's Highway 5, going right over to, uh, Highway 5. Yeah, it's Highway 5. Highway yeah, 5, yeah. Mm -hmm. getting ready to go over 298, that potential tornado, as it moves towards east. I think it's going to go north of Benton, don't you think, Barry? Yeah, this it, it appears that it's very solidly north of that, of Highway 70 and of I-30 as well. But that, uh, that debris right there has probably ramped back up, and Owensville is right there, uh, so get into the safe spot. We've been telling you that for a while now. Uh, the one thing about these storms, and there you can see the reds and the greens come together, you can, you have warning on these storms, generally speaking, because they're on the ground for a long time. Uh, that doesn't mean they're good at all, but that, that just gives us more of an indication of what's happening. I also want to go right back up to Fairfield Bay, and there is, right in Fairfield Bay right now, there is some indication of, uh, and, and this is to south of Shirley and Partain, but Fairfield Bay right there. And these, this is the area that I'm looking at, kind of on the north side of Fairfield Bay right there. A number of neighborhoods in there. We'll look at what it looks like on radar. And there's that little tail feature right there, rain being wrapped around the tail of the, the end of this storm. And uh, there you can see all of the, the roads around Fairfield Bay and all of the neighborhoods there, it looks like the rotation might be going through that north part of there and uh, you need to get into the safe spot. Hopefully you were already there, uh, but that is that is an area that we're gonna continue to watch. It is tornado warned and they'll have to, and, oh, and they have extended that on out, on up into north central Arkansas there. Uh, all right, so several storms. I don't wanna get so hyper-focused that we lose sight, but this storm is coming toward Little Rock there's another storm that's down to the southwest of Hot Springs, and we haven't looked at that one in a while. And I want to keep a close watch out to the west of Bismarck, out to the west of Lake Hamilton. This is a little more southward tracking, Todd, than the one was earlier, and there mm -hmm. is some indication of, of rotation there. It looks rather weak, but this is coming across an area that was... Uh, I don't want to say that it was impacted, but this is just a little south. So this storm hasn't been... The atmosphere hasn't been cooled a lot. It's on the south side of where our last one that moved through the Hot Springs area was. Uh, just to give you some information on that storm, tornado warning expires Clark Garland Hot Spring Montgomery Pike. So okay. I think that's the, the one you were just talking about. Yes. Down here, not this one. The one down here is expiring, as, as the Weather Service just put out. Part of it has expired, at least. Okay. Uh, so th that, that has expired. So we're... What we're looking at is the, the main ones up here in Clinton, uh, west, southwest of Clinton that just went through Fairfield Bay. We're going to have to look at the power outage map for that and see if something happened. We don't have any reports, uh, but we do want to watch this because I think Little Rock uh, will be put under. Guys, um, I just need to let our guys know that in the booth that Brett's trying to call in, but he's getting a busy signal. Uh, we need to try to get hold of Brett, uh, but he's in Little Rock and so is meteorologist James Bryant. Uh, this is the storm that we are really going to focus in on uh, as it moves into the Little Rock metro area. This is it. There's the tornado circulation. 
and it's moving towards Little Rock. Little Rock, we're not under a tornado warning right now, but I think we're going to be put under one very soon. We have meteorologist James Bryant on the phone. Okay. Uh, if we can, get, there's the new tornado warning that just came out, and that may be for areas north, or could also be they're watching something up into, um, yeah, there's another one. There it is, Greenbrier. West side of Greenbrier. Yeah, that's the one that they've been uh, now watching. Yep. Uh, there's Wooster. This is the tornado potential right here. There's Springfield, Springfield uh, Field Road. There's Wooster, West Republican Road. There's Highway 65, uh, very busy highway system there. Uh, and that's the rotation right now, getting its act together and moving towards the northeast. This is going to be near or just north of Highway 65. This is where it splits and goes off towards Guy and Quitman, and this is where it bends and heads up towards uh, Clinton. Uh, so that, that's, a, a, you know, that's been a favorite tornado track area for many, many years. I remember seeing tornadoes develop quite often in that area for some reason, uh, but that's, that's heading up towards Twin Groves. And Guy, Arkansas, Highway 25, uh, Twin Groves and Quitman, uh, I think you need to take your tornado precautions right now. Do we have meteorologist James Bryant? And I also want to let everybody know that we're, uh, he's trying to call in, Brett is, but we cannot get, he's getting a busy signal. Meteorolo meteorologist uh, Brett Ada. Brett, Brett is on the phone. Brett, what do you have for us with Live Storms Media? It's a little rock now on the eastern side. We're going to move west on 40, uh, get around to the west side of town, and then decide whether we're going to drop south there on 430 or if we're going to stay there in the 430-40 interchange just because uh, the storm is moving into the western side of town, has had a history of possibly producing damage now. I know we've seen signatures on radar uh, that have been pretty uh, impressive. So we're going to try to position ourselves out front as this comes in toward the western side of Little Rock. Hey, uh, guy, and stay with us, Brett. I've got his feed up. If we can take his live feed up, there it is. So tell us again where exactly you're located and how you're going to intercept this. So my current location, we literally just passed uh, 40 and 440 split. We're near Landsbrook here on the east side of town, about okay. past uh, Baptist uh, Health Center here in North Little Rock. We're going to continue toward the west on 40, and we're likely to stop at the interchange there, um, maybe near uh, Jeffrey Arkansas Surgical Hospital, over that area, and monitor the, the direction of this storm motion and get out ahead so we can get a good visual of it because, as we know, these, these supercells, Sometimes they like to take a little jog to the right, so we need to be in position to where we can either move back to the to the northeast or if we need to go south and bank ahead of it. But, again, this is a uh, potentially uh, dangerous situation coming into the west side of Little Rock here very soon. Yeah, I was going to say, we're not under a tornado warning yet, Brett, but I think this is going to hold together for Little Rock, don't, don't you? Oh, no doubt, man. Um, based on what I'm seeing, we're, we're seeing a, an actual dramatic increase in, in conversion, those those colors, those reds and those greens coming together on the radar uh, that you guys at home are watching. And uh, we're starting to see that north of Lonsdale, and that system is going to continue to move in the general direction. So expect that tornado warning probably to be extended any time now. And if I were in Little Rock, Small Mail, uh, any of those areas, I would definitely be going through my tornado precautions now versus in the next 15 to 20 minutes. 100% agree, Brett. Please, we're going to continue to follow your feed. Text me. Let me know if you have anything we need to, if I'm not paying any attention to it. But uh, they're now issuing a new tornado warning again. They already did for the uh, Menifee storm, I believe, is what they're calling it, the one that's heading up towards Greenbrier right, right. now. And I've been looking at that thanks, one. Thanks, Brett. And, uh, yeah, thanks, Brett. All right, I've been looking at that one. And Brett will be getting closer and closer to that. He knows what he's doing, folks, and so we're going to be relying on him. But the, the one out to the west of Greenbrier right now has that uh, distinct look. Uh, I looked at the rotation with it. I'd say it is very broad. <clears throat> if you remember what we showed you around Hot Springs, it was kind of a uh, the mesocyclone. It was a, a large lowering, and I would say there's probably a lowering of the cloud base out to the west there. A lot of wind coming out of this storm, but there is some... Uh, when going away from the radar side. It's kind of a broad circulation there. It looks uh, a little more ominous probably on just reflectivity, the rain part being wrapped around some sort of circulation center than it does on the velocity part, which is um, certainly there's a strong wind field there. As far as debris goes with this, I don't see anything that would indicate that there is a debris signature with that storm. I think this storm is getting its act together, but you are in a tornado warning 
in this area. So Greenbrier and Guy and on up toward Quitman, this is the time. Uh, Greenbrier, right along Highway 65, everywhere there, just go ahead and get in that safe spot in your house. It doesn't take long to do it, and it could be what saves you. We gotta, we've got to get away from the exterior walls and windows into a small closet or room out in the middle of, uh, of your dwelling place, and if you have a storm shelter, go to that. 55 miles an hour, it's going to be here and gone very quickly, but along Highway 25 then, that's where that broad area of rotation will go. Uh, I do want to go back to the storm that's approaching the Little Rock area right now. And uh, Todd, I don't know if you've looked at this lately, Not as but strong. it's very broad rotation now. It's still, the structure on reflectivity is very um, incredible, to say the least. It looks on reflectivity, it looks like a supercell thunderstorm uh, still. Yeah. But when you look at the velocities, it's not as it's disorganized right now. But I'm not, folks. This is this could be recycling. It could ramp up once again. Absolutely. But there's Benton. I think it's going to go just to the north of Benton. It has just crossed over Highway Five. Uh, here you see I-430 on the far right side of your screen. The Big Rock Interchange here. That's uh, Otter Creek with uh, the Big Bass Pro, and you got the uh, uh, the Outlet Mall over there. And there's Salem, uh, Lawson Road, Congo Ferndale. This is going to pass over that area. And my worry here is that in a scan or two, this is going to increase again mm -hmm. because it's moving into a, the atmosphere ahead of this is favorable. And I don't see any reason why it wouldn't. Um, yeah, why would it be less strong now than it was? I, I, don't, I, don't, see, I don't see that. So yeah. even though we, the velocity may not be perfect, I agree, Todd. I, I think this is one to watch. Right. So we, we, this is the one, and again, the one that Barry was tracking in northern Faulkner County. Look at the debris that. detector there on that storm right now, uh, Todd. All right, I'm going to go to the debris detector. Yeah. That's, it's kind of displaced, though, a uh, little bit only, to the right. Only a little bit, and that may be because the scans were a little bit. But there, there has been a consistent area, and, and that may just be a dropout on the, on the radar looking at that angle, but uh, right there. Uh, we'll see, and I don't know if the National Weather Service has talked about that, but uh, as Todd mentioned, though, as this comes into New Little Rock. New tornado warning coming for the Little Rock metro area. Okay, so yeah, this will be extended. That's not uh, unexpected. Uh, as it moves, the tail end of this storm will be moving in. That's the circulation part. You're going to see rain before that. You can see the broad area of rain out uh, Chenal Mountain, uh, out along Highway 10 corridor there. But it's the southern part that we're really more concerned about as it moves up in to that area along uh, County Line Road, Congo, Ferndale Cutoff, uh, and into the west and southwest part of Pulaski County, western Pulaski County, really. All right, we got our Chenal camera up and ready to go, pointing in the right direction. We also have meteorologist James Bryant, who's following this. It has not officially been issued, but that we just told in our conversations with Little Rock National Weather Service that they are going to issue a tornado warning for the Little Rock metro area. Now is the time for school administrators to get the kids to their safe place. It's there's the issuance right there, new tornado warning. Before we go to James, James stay with us. I want to show the tornado warning before we go to you. But now is the time that I want all of the kids to go into shelter. It includes Maumelle, West Little Rock, all of Little Rock basically, Sherwood, not Jacksonville, it includes North Little Rock as well. And there it is the uh, Ferndale area as well. Now is the time, do not panic, just get the kids to a safe place. Meteorologist James Bryant is with us right now. What do you see, James? Hey guys, we are uh, really just behind Brett Adair. We are moving west on I-40. We're getting close to Galloway. Um, and Todd, as we wait to uh, for this storm to get close to you, quickly, uh, we're going to try to get in position to watch it move through what, what I think is going to be um, right through or just to the south of Little Rock. Yeah, it, it is going to come into the metro area. The question is, James, it seems disorganized right now, but I think they issued that because it's cyclical, that it's going to ramp up possibly once again. Uh, I'm trying to get an idea where you are. So you're, you're out there uh, near the... Uh, the airport, you're, where are you getting off right now on the This on is the a Galloway exit. It's okay. in the eastern section right. of Pulaski County, uh, and I think we're about to go south. Because I, I am honestly expecting this thing to take a uh, more of an eastward trajectory. I know the tornado warning is more east-northeast, uh, but more of an eastward trajectory. You might be able to hear the tornado sirens going off here in the eastern section of Pulaski County, which is north Little Rock. Um, we're about to go south. We're going to be going south and uh, getting a good view to the west. All right, James, I want to tell you that the tornado is located, the potential tornado coming up on Salem, Congo, 
uh, areas along the Salina Pulaski County line includes Lawson Road. And I just want to tell my brother's family they need to be in their safe place right now because they live out in that area of Salina Pulaski County. He's out in that, uh, that, that neck of the woods. So Steel Bridge Road is another one. Potential tornado developing uh, Twin Springs out there in western Pulaski County. Um, the potential tornado again tornado warning they're issuing this not because of a confirmed tornado we do not have a confirmed tornado what we have is a storm that has a history of producing some damage strong circulation the question is is this reorganizing that's where it is there's highway 5 there's lonsdale there's benton there's salem this is the saline Pulaski county line right here you see right on the far right side there's the big rock interchange i'm going to reposition this in just a little bit but if there's a tornado that's where it's located. I'm going to go into that area, show you what I'm looking at. The, the, the uh, colors tell us something. The red's away from the radar, the green's towards the radar. So Gunner Loop, Daviswell Road, that if there's a tornado developing, that's where it is going across Highway 298. Uh, and it's going to be moving up there towards uh, uh, Hinkson Road, Goodwin uh, Road. Now, backing that out, Avila is another community. Uh, and go back out just a little bit more and move this over so there's the big rock interchange there's chanel mountain let our great production guys know that I've, i think i positioned that facing uh just a little bit towards the south southeast so uh, we'll be able to look into that hopefully and see if there's anything uh, also um you know any cameras along i-432 because this is going to cross 430 at some point uh in little rock but that's it there's chanel west little rock take your tornado precautions right now all of little rock needs to take their tornado precautions right now and while we say that there is not a confirmed tornado but it's doppler radar indicated and this storm has a history of producing damage when it was near hot springs barry what do you have well let's quickly go to another uh, tornado worn storm that's on up to the north of greenbrier right now and it's heading toward guy and guy you need to be in your tornado safe spot uh, with this storm as it moves off to the northeast along Highway 25. And here's the velocity product on that. And there definitely is a lot of wind going away from the radar site. Some coming toward uh, debris wise. Uh, I don't see any, I don't really see anything uh, there, but it is a potential tornado producer there. And that is in the northern part of Faulkner County and will be moving toward equipment. Guy to equipment on Highway 25, you need to get into that safe spot as that storm moves through. And now coming back into the Little Rock area there, uh, I, again, there's another storm moving through Hot Springs. It is not tornado warned though right now. We'll keep a close watch on that. But the velocity uh, continues uh, to, to kind of show a broad rotation out there moving uh, in the Congo area, Congo Ferndale uh, Road, and uh, then moving into Pulaski County very, very quickly on radar. It uh, is that tail that we're looking at right now. Todd, I don't know if anything is being produced with this, no, I, but I don't it, think is it is a supercell as supercells get. The, and that I think at any time incredible. it could. Look, that, that structure that you see behind you, Barry, that, that, that's a supercell thunderstorm. Yeah, absolutely. But I do not see anything on debris now. No. Nothing on debris, so that's good. I just want to give everybody in Pulaski County and Little Rock, just know we're watching that. I look at the velocities. Yep, you see where if there's something that's going to form, that's the part of the storm that's going to happen. I do not see it coming together right now. It could at any moment. Barry, the other thing is we have a very high level of confidence when we look at the radar because the radar is right here. Oh, yeah. Uh, so we're looking yeah. at this at the very bottom where there's a tornado could be produced. So right now, while there is a tornado warning in place, we at this moment don't think that there's one on the ground. We think there could be one developing. We want you to stay sheltered no matter what. That's the fact of the matter. Stay sheltered. It's better to be safe than sorry. And this is going to be moving into a highly populated area. We're concentrating a lot on this storm and the one that Barry was talking about yeah. in Faulkner County uh, going up there uh, near Guy. Near Barry, Guy, I think uh, there is rotation there. There's no yeah. doubt on that now. We're watching this, uh, Todd. And it is, it is a, a broad fetch of wind going away from the radar site, but you can see some coming toward there. So it's right on top of Guy right now. It will move on up toward Quitman uh, or, or perhaps just south, but it'll it'll parallel 225 there, and uh, it'll be moving off to the northeast. So that is one of concern for us. And if you look at the radar, you'll see it wrapping around a circulation center, and that's just to the southeast of Guy right there. So even if I just had reflectivity or rain, what the, the 
it's seeing as far as actual raindrops, I would say, yeah, that's a potential tornado. But looking at the wind field inside of it, that's where we begin to see, uh, yeah, it, it has tightened up. It, it is really tightened up. So equipment, you're just up the road here, a very rural area between Guy and Quitman, but there are a number of homes along that road, and that is where uh, there would be uh, a tornado if this storm is producing one. Just because it's the day that it is today, let's assume that these storms are all producing tornadoes, unless we can tell you otherwise in this one. We certainly can't tell you that uh, as we look at this storm as it moves off to Quitman. And these storms are moving at about 50 miles per hour. So I'm going to go right from that circulation center. And uh, I can't even go out far enough on this map, but uh, Quitman would be uh, in about 15 minutes time. And then Pearson Heber Springs, you would eventually be in the track of this storm as it comes on through. Uh, but here is the rest of it and the storm moving into Little Rock, the one near Guy, and then the one on up into Stone County. There still is a tornado warning right there on that. So three different storms, but we're going to continue to watch all of them. And the atmosphere is just ripe. Look at eastern Arkansas. There is there's nothing going on out in eastern Arkansas except for maybe a little rain around the Searcy area. So this is an area that is very warm. This won't last forever, folks. This will be in and it'll be out of here. I think by dinner time or just after we're going to be done with this but not a moment too soon because this atmosphere has destabilized greatly. And, uh, and so we're going to continue to watch these storms. But I'll go back and zoom in on the storm that's coming in to the Little Rock area. And there it is. It's a broad circulation, but maybe, uh, maybe a little tighter than it was as it uh, yeah. goes across Congo Ferndale uh, Road there. Yeah. And as it comes right into the western part of Pulaski County, that's the Saline pulaski County line right there that we're looking at. And I'll just step back. Here's the Big Rock Interchange out on 430 and 630. And so it would be coming into that area of west and southwest uh, Little Rock, into west Little Rock as well. That's the rotation center. If you were to look outside right now, which I don't recommend, it, you're going to see a lowering of that cloud base. That's what we call a mesocyclone. So you see the broad base of the storm. Then you see a part of it lowering down to the ground. And from that, if there is a tornado, that's what you need to look for. Yeah. You, you see any more on that storm, Todd? No. Uh, Maybe a little tighter rotation than it was, but it is moving into Pulaski County. It is, and I think we're going to see damaging winds out of this storm no yeah. matter what. Uh, I've got Brett Adair now uh, live. He's at Rodney Parham Road in West Little Rock. I'm just guessing, uh, but I'm very familiar with that. 430 at Rodney Parham. So he's heading, okay, now you're looking over here. There's the Olive Garden there, so he's looking, yeah. So he's looking off towards the southwest. That's where the storm would be. There's the Exxon. Uh, and um, so, yeah, there's the Exxon there. I'm not quite sure what he's doing out there, but it's, it's, if there's a tornado, it's over here. So we have our storm chasers on it right now. So that's where he's positioned himself, uh, live storms, media meteorologist. He's going to point that camera here on Rodney Parham Road. You see the lowering just beyond those hills there, uh, and it's going to be coming up over that. So he's on Rodney Parham Road uh, right there where uh, 10 Fitness is located, too, on the other side of that. Now, going, I just want to tell you we're watching his feed, too. Meteorologist James Bryant is also watching this just to the east of town. Now, let's look and see where this tornado potentially would be located. Heavy rain very heavy rain coming into West Little Rock. This is um, probably a lot of wind with this. This is where the circulation is located, right in here. There's Chenal Mountain, just a couple of miles, about two to four miles to the south of Chenal Mountain. There's the Big Rock Interchange. Uh, Brett is located right about here. That's where Brett's located, right there. And he's looking off towards the west-southwest. So that's what he was doing with that position. Uh, our Chenal camera, Guys, if we uh, got uh, Mr. Ross over here, uh, maybe he could move that over and, and we can get a little bit glimpse as to what that's looking like here. So our camera on Chenal Mountain, I can go over to that and we can look. He's moving that around. That was downtown, I think. So which way are you going? We're just we're scanning around and right now it is obscured with rainfall and I don't see anything because we are obscured with some heavy rainfall. So let's go back to the radar. A lot of the cameras are moving around. Guys, if you could stop those, they're just kind of swinging around. Yeah, uh, so but this is it. There's the Big Rock. It's coming up towards uh, West Little Rock. I want everybody in the uh, Pebble Beach area of West Little Rock, Colony West, Sturbridge, Pleasant Valley, all those locations there, Brody Creek. I want you to stay sheltered. 
They're, they're, most likely right now this is not producing a tornado, but it could at any moment. It's a potential tornado. That's the circulation due south of Chenal Mountain. There's the big rock, and it's moving quickly at about 50 miles per hour. So we can get in a little bit closer. Barry, um, I don't see anything that would say that this is on the air, or on the ground, I mean. No, there's Twin Springs, Boat Champ Road. Debris-wise, I don't see anything there. Yeah, uh, there's a, that's, that's where it would be located, Boat Champ Road. There's Stewart Road, Canis and Denny Road right up here. St. Charles takes shelter right now. Uh, there's Cooper Orbit Road. Canis Road out there in West Little Rock that merges over there towards Chenal. I want you to take your tornado precautions. There's Lawson Road that it's going over right now. Uh, my brother's house is just about there. Uh, so it's going just to the north of their location and it's moving towards the northeast right into town. But again, there's no confirmation this is on the ground, Barry. No, and, and, and that's the good thing. But this is definitely a supercell a storm that is coming in as it moves out in those areas around Cooper Orbit and Lawson Road and even Canis Road. Uh, so that it's, this, it's this trailing feature that we see as it moves into Pulaski County. And then Chenal Parkway showing up on there as well as I-430 and the Big Rock Interchange. So it's going to be going there. And this is something we're going to be watching very carefully, obviously coming into a big population center in the western part of the city. And uh, just okay. velocity-wise, I mean, there's still broad rotation going away from and toward the radar site right out here. Barry, I'm sorry. Do we see a... We got the wall cloud from Brett. Okay. There Let's it see. is. Yeah, and there probably will be a lowering. There, there it is. Uh, he's looking at it from Rodney Parham. Let me get out of the way. Yeah, yeah, there that's the lowering as it comes in. 10 Fitness right there. So that's Rodney Parham and, uh, and I-430 as he's looking off to the southwest. And certainly a, a supercell thunderstorm like that is unmistakable. And that's why it is a tornado warned storm N not because of perhaps what it's doing right now, but because of what it could do at any time. So if you're out in West Little Rock right now, you need to go ahead and be in a safe spot. This is a fast moving storm. Get into the lowest level of your home. And I'm talking to my family there. So yep. get into the lowest level of your home and let this go by. This may be strengthening, Barry. Yeah, it, I think it could be. I think there I think is a little is. more rotation with it. But, uh, but this, is, this is what we've prepared for, and so let's look and see if any debris along with that. I, I don't see anything of note, and, but I think there is a bit of a curl there yeah. more than there was. So this is a rotation center, I think, that's starting to pick up somewhat. Can if we, you're in West Little Rock, it's time to get an, in cover right now. Guys in our production, beware. I think Brett's going to try to call in. Uh, this is increasing in circulation as it comes into the metro. Uh, if we can get Brett, he's going to try to call in. I just text him, uh, and hopefully he'll call in. But yeah, that's the lowering there. Uh, Barry, I know you travel this road all the time. Shackleford Road is right over here. Yep. You're looking towards the southwest, and it's coming right into a highly populated area. We do not know if there's a tornado on the ground with this right now. There's the lowering. If there's a tornado, it's embedded in this dark cloud, and you will not know it until it's right on top of you because of the terrain and the, how low the base of this is. Uh, again, I'm trying to get Brett to call in right now, um, but this is a Rodney Parham Road where he's located. Uh, and I'm, while we look at those pictures, I'm stay with this Max 1. I'm going to go into this to name some of the roads where this is increasing now coming into the Little Rock metro area. I want you to stay sheltered, put as many walls between you and the outside. Stay away from windows. All of our friends out there in... Uh, West Little Rock, uh, this includes Sturbridge, Colony West, Breckenridge. This includes the Pebble Beach area, uh, Henson, Pleasant Valley, Taylor Loop, Chenal, those areas down towards Bowman, Colonel Glen. Please seek shelter immediately. No confirmation of a tornado, but this is starting to show signs that it could be increasing some of its spin. And there it is. It's kind of, it's very difficult to tell. There's Rawling Road, mm -hmm. so I'm trying to get a, a, a sense here. There's Chenal, there's Rawling, so the promenade, Barry, right about there. Yeah, and I'm, I'm just thinking the, the velocity picture is so, uh, I, I don't know why we're not seeing a different picture of that, but the reflectivity picture is almost better because you can tell where the circulation center is, and you can see it right there. Chenal Parkway, it's moving right into West Little Rock. 
uh, those the neighborhoods of Chenal and Pleasant Valley and moving right up through there. So the, it's the tail end of that storm. And if we can go back, I, I'm just going to say you, you got to be in a safe spot right now. Is there still a picture from Brett that we yeah, can show? Yeah, and he's of that zooming storm? in on something I don't like to see. Yeah, that folks, I think that's a tornado on the ground. There's Ten Fitness. I, do we have Brett on the phone? It's so hard to tell from these Todd, pictures. Todd, can you hear me? Brett, uh, we see the uh, lowering. Is that a tornado right above the Ten and Ten Fitness? I can I cannot confirm that that's a tornado there, but I can tell you right behind that sign, that whole larger area above yeah. it is rotating rapidly. Yeah. A very, very quick rotation. Matter of fact, it's coming up. you got a funnel developing over the 10 now. That's it. This is right over the, the left 10? Yeah. Right here? Yeah. We're going to have to We're gonna have to have move. It's going to come right over top of us. It's going to come right over top of us. We're going to have to move. Okay, Brett, stay with us. Again, this is okay, coming into got, West Little Rock. We may have a tornado now on the mountain there. See it? Yeah, that's a hill out there in West Little Rock. That's probably that's out there buried. Okay, yeah. folks. Yeah. I want to tornado tell my wife, take cover now. Yes, please tornado take cover. And Barry's ground. family, too. All right, we got to go. we got to go. Hillsboro, Marlow Manor. Those locations, yep. Barry, can What's you think that? of any other place? Yeah, it's all, it's it's that area. Uh, it's coming right here. Go, 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 go. Go, get the left. Yeah, that's a classic hold on, hold on. supercell storm, Let's stay with folks. Brett, and I'm going to name out some of those towns. Let's stay here right. with that. There it is, big tornado. All right, yep. stop, 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 stop. Get in, get right there. Get right there in the yep. parking lot. That's yeah, it right there. Tornado. Okay, that's coming right into West Little Rock, yep. down right. to the south of Rodney Parham. Right there. Hold up. Right here. Here we go. Moving into West Little Rock on the southwest, just south of Rodney Parham, folks. This is coming up. I'm trying to think of some of the locations. Markham, West Markham, uh, Bowman. Yeah, in that area, right. Uh, uh, Asbury, debris. Canis, Woodland. Uh, Big time debris. You got debris? All right, we need to... Yeah, I see the rapid movement. The left? Yeah. We have a significant tornado on the ground in Little Rock. Uh, it's going to be crossing I-430, probably close to where Chanel Parkway dumps out onto I-630. All right, it, big. All right where do we go? Okay, guys, you may want to go. All right, all right, we got to move, we got to move, we got to move. Yeah. All right, stay on. Mm -hmm. Brett, you're live yeah, on I the air. Let's just, uh, uh, you're live on the air. Just tell us what you oh. see. There's the tornado. It's on the ground in Little Rock. I think, are they issuing a tornado emergency yet? Have they issued one? Go, go, uh, go, 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 go. They haven't yet. Big tornado. All right. It's passing behind us. Hold up. It's ha he says, let's stay with that. Okay. Barry, do you know where yeah, the, it is where starting is it to ramp up. And, folks, it's right along that. Uh, yeah. It's right along. It's, it's going to hit the radio. Chanel, Chanel Parkway and, and 630 um, West go, Markham. Go, 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 go. Okay, we don't have a speed. We've lost the feed. Slowly. Stay, uh -oh. keep his audio, guys. Go to radar with Barry. Keep his audio. Go. There's huge debris in the air. Huge debris. I'm going to look and see if we got, we don't have his picture. It's frozen. It's, it's up. He's got his picture up now. He's Can on we take it again? Yeah. Okay, so he's, that, he's going back on 430. He says he sees a lot of debris. It's going to be crossing over 430. You said where it dumps out with 630 at the Big Rock? Yeah, I think, I think that's... Oh. And it might be in between there and Rodney oh. Parham. It's right over the hill, buddy. Okay, your 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 uh, go. your feed is out. Go 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 to left. Baptist. Ah, go. go. Baptist hospitals in the right path. Go. Very cool. Do we have RSA. a camera at the Big Rock that we can look go. at, guys? The Big Rock camera. Go. Farm Bureau camera. All right. Come on. Big Rock camera. Do you guys have that? I can't put it in. Can you guys? I'm going to go put in the big rock. Stay with Brett. Some of these are not. Uh, from downtown, we can actually see it. All right. From downtown, you can actually see. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can, Brett. All right. The tornado passed just. It looks like it passed just behind me. I am sitting at uh, Markham and 440. 430. Uh, it passed just behind me. There was huge debris in the air um, as it came across. That tornado got really rapid and really quick. It ramped up really, really fast here, and it's coming right into the western side of Little Rock right now. Okay, this, yeah. the, this picture froze, but I'm, I'm going to show you exactly. Let's, okay. let's come to me really quickly, folks. Go to, go to Barry. Go to Barry. A big amount of rotation showing up right there. Let's go back right, to... To max two if we can. 
And there it is. That was just a, a, a scan ago. It has crossed over, I think, between Rodney Parham and Chanel Parkway right across 430. And it will be moving into that area along Rodney Parham and headed up toward uh, uh, Kamek Village and that area uh, and, and possibly just south there. Anywhere, though, in that western part of Little Rock, you need to be in a safe space right now. This has definitely been on the ground. There was debris confirmed with this as it's moving up through. And in a very rapid amount of time, uh, I'll go back just a little bit, we went from hardly anything to a big amount of rotation as it entered West Little Rock right there. And that would have been along Bowman Road, uh, south of Rodney Parham, and continues to move then off to the east. And here's what it looks like on reflectivity. I think it's on up now, uh, moving into that area, um, uh, Breckenridge, south of, of Highway 10, Reservoir. probably moving across Highway 10 corridor as well. Reservoir Road. Yes, in that area Kamak right Village. there. Village. Uh, still trying to get Brett, but this is moving towards the river. Uh, all right, guys, we got to start thinking about us here at KTV too. Rebsamen Road, Riverfront. It may pass just towards our west. Okay, can we take, let's take the, the uh, Regents camera uh, downtown looking off to the west, if we can. Regents, I, can, we, can we take that? The Regents camera? Yeah, you I'm can actually on see it. it on there right now. I'm working on it right now, Barry. I, I've got it, it's, it's pointing there, but got yeah, it. if got we can. It. There's Regents. Yeah, right there, There's and the you tornado. can see it. That is the, that's extending, that's a large tornado, it appears, extending down to the ground. That's looking straight west, so it is moving then along that corridor, Highway 10, and here we are in Riverdale, right in the foreground there. I think we're okay. I think it may go just north of the Riverdale area, but I think we need to watch this very carefully. If you're in the Heights, you're in Kamek Village, you're anywhere along Highway 10, uh, uh, Ketchell Road as it moves out to the west, you've got to be in your safe spot right now. That is real time what is happening. And folks, it looks like it, is, uh, it has grown in intensity quite a bit. There is an obvious mesocyclone there, and this has made it down to the ground, according to Brett Adair, uh, and, and is moving up into that Heights area. I'm going to zoom in on it, Barry, see if we see debris. Uh, so stay with that image. I want everybody at Channel 7, uh, get ready to take action, but don't just yet. All right, we're losing electricity. Are we still on the air? Uh, okay, I see power flashes. It's power. on the ground. It's on the ground. I saw power flashes. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I think we are on generator. generator power now, and I hope we are still broadcasting. And uh, But it is, folks, it's Fro Foxcroft Road uh, moving right up into the heights right now. Okay. This is a large tornado. Debris signature with it. Uh, it. Hard to tell, but there is plenty of velocity right there. This is Highway 10, Foxcroft Road, Kamek Village, uh, down into the heights. It is crossing Highway 10 right there and we'll be moving on up uh, into the Burns Park area and then on over to the, uh, to the east northeast. And uh, so it will be moving north of the 630 corridor going over the crossing river. Highway 10 right there. And that's the velocity that we're looking at with this storm. Okay, I'm going to follow it to the left a little bit. It's going across yeah. the river very soon. We can take this it. This is uh, within a mile, of, less than a mile of the station probably. Yeah, it's moving. It'll move, it'll move right across over into to Burns Park, it appears right now. I, uh, it's on the ground. I don't see power flashes yet, uh, but it's, it's on the ground doing damage. Uh, we're right there by those white buildings. Yeah, uh, and I think they may have issued a tornado emergency. Yep, tornado emergency for Little Rock going over into North Little Rock right now. Again, we're continuing to follow this. Yeah, it is, uh, it's moving right, uh, well, it's not very far from us at all right here, right now. It's very, it's, it's right, it's right by the building. I think, um, yeah, Todd, it's right over the Burns Park area there. Yep. It will be coming into the North North Little Rock area. Lakewood. Lakewood, North Little Rock, take cover now. Sherwood, take cover now. Maumelle, especially the east side of Maumelle, take cover now. Rapid yeah. rotation. I'm gonna zoom out to see how wide this is. Levy, it'll be crossing I-40. That is a large tornado. It is huge. Uh, just say a prayer, everybody. Yeah, say absolutely. A, prayer. a lot of people could be being hurt right now. It is. Uh, it is. It has moved up just to the north of Riverdale. Here it appears. 
I don't, um, I'll bet you if we stepped outside the building right now, we could hear this because we are very, very close to this. But this is a storm that continues to move up and it is moving across the river and uh, kind of the west end of, of Rebsman. It's moving over the Burns Park, over Burns Park right now. All right, James Bryant will be on in just a little bit. He says, uh, uh, take the feed, take the feed. Uh, go to James Bryant, we have that. James, are you on the phone? What do you have? Yeah, I'm in North Little Rock. We're just by Spring Hill. We're uh, getting very close, guys. This is coming right at us. James, um, get I safe because this is huge. You stay back from it, man. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're about to turn around. But you can see it, man. It, this is unbelievable, the images that you are about to see. This is coming right into North Little Rock. This is coming right into North Little Rock. Charles, we got to turn around, man. All right, just stay with us. Just Let's keep warning everybody. Lane. The, lane, the right National there. Weather Service has said that they are going to possibly be taking cover. Yes. So but, you, uh, Memphis will take over responsibility. From my feed, you can't see the actual tornado, but that lowering you see in the distance, the gray, that is the large tornado right there. That it, 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 it is, it's, I can see it moving to my right, so it's not coming directly at us. It is moving northeast. You can see it. I'm going to zoom in on it. It's you, up there to the right. You stay back away from it. Brett Adair has said that numerous vehicles have been overturned oh, guys, with this storm. That's a bad signature on radar right there. That's a bad signature on radar. I think I, I just saw debris get flown out. Is there debris coming down? There's a debris dropout right now at, uh, near Amboy uh, and I-430 and, uh, and Military Drive. I've there, got it up on the, the storm. On, there's a uh, debris ball right there with that storm. Guys, stay with me. I think it's going to go to my north, but I'm going to have a view of it. All right, this is uh, across the river now, and it's going into North Rock. We've got to keep warning communities. It's going to be going right near our radar, but if you're anywhere uh, toward Remount Road, uh, Sherwood, that area uh, around Camp Robinson, and just to the south of there, uh, this right. has crossed I-40. James, talk to us. What do you see? Guys, I'm just sitting on the McCain Boulevard Bridge right by McCain Mall. I, I really wish people would stop driving to the west. It's just across the I-40. Look at this. Burns yeah. Park. Go to the, go to the, is it the Regents forward. or Simmons? Which camera is we're it? We're going to go get on 67, Charles. Turn us around. We're going to get on 67, and uh, we're going to try to parallel it so we don't get in front of it. But there, there, guys, there. If you can see my image here, you guys see this? Are you seeing this? Yeah, we see. That That's it. That's it right there. It's yeah, we can see it. It's on the region's yeah, I've, camera. I've got rapid rotation, guys. I've got rapid rotation right there. I've got it on the region's camera. If you want to look at that, guys, it got a clear view of it. Oh. Do you see that, Barry, on the region's yeah, camera? I do. I do. I'm going to start to move that towards the left now, or to it the is, right. I'm sorry. It is very close to the National Weather Service radar. Yeah. Little Rock Air Force Base sure would take cover now. Yes, Jacksonville, yep. you'll be in the path of this storm. Keel Avenue, uh, Sherwood, and and points up to North Gravel Ridge. And that is the storm that we're looking at. And the yeah, right now we're getting a, a rather ragged image from the National Weather Service in, in Little Rock. But uh, what they're talking about is uh, Phones are being activated here. The National Weather Service in Memphis has taken over responsibility of re warning this. I guess the, the, the folks oh my gosh. in North Little Rock have. The tornado, yeah. I've got incredible video of it. I'm going to try to put it on my Facebook page, use it there. It's from Baptist Hospital. I'm getting pictures now of a power North Shackelford trees and power lines down all over the place. It's still on the ground. Uh, power outages all on the track of this Barry, North Little Rock, uh, Memphis is taking yeah. control, Northern Pulaski County, Cabot, we want Cabot to watch this. Tornado emergency going into Northeastern Pulaski County, BB, tornado emergency. Take your tornado precautions now. That's, you're looking live right now, north of Little Rock, that is the lowering and there's a tornado in there. We want you to go ahead and take those tornado precautions immediately. This is not a drill, this is confirmed. Yes, James, go ahead. I've got it right here. I'm looking at it. Go. James is live feed. Yeah. So that's looking north, uh, northwest of McCain Mall. Yeah. 
what, James, are you there? That's northwest of McCain Mall? That's north of McCain, yeah, that's right moving. to Sherwood. Yeah. This is McCain Mall right there in front of me. I'm looking to the northwest. You can see the gray mass right there. I, I, think, I think it's right near the National Weather Service uh, radar. So we're, yeah, we're looking back into Sherwood. Yeah, looking back into Sherwood. And, and uh, so air, air base. Uh, yeah. I see the rotation area, and it is right on top of the radome of the radar. Oh, my. Okay, keep, we got to warn that everybody stay sheltered. Yeah. Little Rock, you're in the clear right now, but we have rain, and we still have a severe weather threat, even in the metro area. The worst of this is going over directly over the North Little Rock Airport. Uh, this is the only tornado worn storm in the state, by, by the way, right now. It is moving toward Gravel Ridge, <clears throat> pardon me, in Jacksonville, and you need to get into the safe spot along Highway 107. It's right on top of you. Cabot, it's coming up on you as well. There is the hook right there. It moved right past, and this hook is where we saw rotation moving right toward Cabot. Um, and well, we and we'll, it's we'll continue. Uh, debris signature is right near the radar site. Velocity product showing it right there, right over on North Remount Road, uh, which is where the National Weather Service is, that is where it went, and move, and it will move right up toward Cabot. Uh, perhaps Jacksonville, though, you you need to be in a safe spot right now. So it's that northeastern uh, part of Pulaski County. You need to be in a safe spot right now. All right, tornado. This is video of it as it came through West Little Rock on Storyteller. If we can, this is from Baptist Hospital. Beth Hunt sent this to me. I don't know who it is exactly from, but that's the tornado going through West Little Rock. That's the Big Rock interchange. This is from one of the floors of West Little Rock, and that is the tornado going across West Little Rock. We know that we have a lot of damage uh, in the Shackleford area, uh, but that's you see that wide area, and then underneath that is the tornado, the wall cloud, the bezo, and then the tornado, and that is still on the ground, producing large amounts of damage. Now the National Weather Service is calling it catastrophic, labeling this catastrophic. That's the tornado as it went through West Little Rock. Let's go back at the, uh, to the radar and see what we have. Uh, this is the back edge of it. I'm gonna get off screen and, and move this camera uh, a little bit towards the right where this is uh, now moving towards uh, highway. Has it crossed 67, 167? Barry, uh, it does not look here, as strong as it did. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. Get up here at the top of this hill and pull off to the left. We're gonna have a view of it as it crosses <clears throat> 67 here. It's in Sherwood, it's on your left. Okay, is it still on the ground, James? be still on the ground it looks like it's obscured in rain to me keep going charles you're good uh but it is just to our west yeah it is it's just to the west of 67 there we're, we're passing the sands in north little rock and it is appearing like it is about to cross the freeway here down the road yeah right, keel avenue and as it intersects 167 there, there or 67. are a lot of people driving north on 67 they've got to stop they've got they to stop all right, I uh, got damage in the Parkway right. Place subdivision in West Little Rock. Trees down on homes. That's Chanel and Parkway Place. Trees down on homes. James, keep us updated. What do you see? All right, guys. All right, you're looking on 67, 167, looking That's up towards north. the north. That's a large area of rain. It's moving across 67, 167 towards Jacksonville now. There's a tornado within that large area, most likely. It's right in front of us, guys. It is. It's, it's right down there. Okay. I'm looking at the debris ball. I'm just to the south of it. Just to the south of it. Okay. Yeah. One mile, one mile out, and I can't see it. It's just wrapped in rain, but I know it's there. All right, James, I think your best course of action now would be to look for um, damage because it's going gonna, it's gonna to outrun you. West on Keel Avenue, over toward uh, Sylvan Hills, and along 107 there. Yes, uh, it's crossing. <clears throat> it's crossing right, right uh, along. Uh, well, just just where Keel uh, crosses 167 is where it, it, it the rotation uh, appears to have crossed. And I don't know if it's still on the ground, but it certainly looks like it could be so let's I've got rotation on my video I don't know if you can tell it's really gray yeah there's still plenty of rotation with that storm we're gonna move up 167 to see if there's any damage okay okay 
Jacksonville, if you're in the path of this storm and everybody between Sherwood and Jacksonville, um, you need to, that's where it's gonna cross, right there. So there's, there's Jacksonville, Gravel Ridge over to the west. Sherwood, looks like it, it went right past the Weather Service radome and it will be passing over into the area, perhaps up to Cabot, but certainly around Jacksonville. Uh, you need to be down in the lowest part of your house. Get into a small closet or a small room, please. And uh, this, and because this storm is likely still on the ground, as we look at it, uh, reflectivity-wise, yeah, there's still that that little tail on it, an obvious sign of intense rotation there. We'll look for some debris in the air. Obviously, it lofted debris in the air. It's so close to the radar site right now; it's hard to tell. Hopefully this thing will begin to uh, dissipate uh, quickly, but it has done a, uh, an unbelievable amount of damage, I'm afraid. Moving on up now into this area to the south of Cabot, mm -hmm. you need to be in your safe spot. Please go to the safe spot in your house. This uh, also, Todd, I think it could, as it did before it went into Little Rock, I think it could be recycling as well. All right, that's, I think we have a, uh, I'm told by Kristen, we have a live shot off Rodney Parham of the damage. Real quick, let's go to that because we've got to stay with this tornado, but let's show the damage that's uh, come through. Little Rock, West Little Rock, as we are following this from meteorologist Brett Adair, Adair, the first live images you saw of that tornado here on Channel 7. And damage now also on Storyteller, if we can get the Storyteller or that live shot out there in West Little Rock. This is again on Storyteller. Okay, so this is damage in the West Little Rock area, trees down on homes, significant tornado damage has been done. This is the Parkway Place uh, subdivision uh, there off of Chanel and Canis in between those two uh, streets. Uh, like, do we have the live shot now on Rodney Parham Road? Do we have that live shot on Rodney Parham Road of the damage? All right, so this is I-430 and Rodney Parham. That's getting off at 430 and onto Rodney Parham. That's northbound traffic, southbound traffic backed up too. Uh, you see the damage on the on the uh, ramp uh, right there, cars and traffic moving around that. Uh, but right now, uh, they're trying to clear, clear that. It is best to stay off the roads. Please stay off the roads. You've got to have emergency personnel get into the areas affected. You've got to have them. You see one of them right there. And the more traffic on the roads, the harder it is to get in there and help people if they're if they're trapped in a home if they're in any sort of danger. So we want everybody to stay off the road and don't go sightseeing this damage. But it is significant, and that is in Pulaski County, moving towards the uh, Cabot area. Right now in northern eastern Pulaski County, in the northern areas of Lone Oak County, catastrophic damage, tornado emergency continues. Barry? Jacksonville, you've got to be in your safe spot now. Rotation is coming into Jacksonville still. We're assuming that this is still on the ground. And here are the streets, uh, the streets of, of, of Jacksonville moving right along. Uh, and it's it, with, with some delay in processing, it's in Jacksonville right now. This is a fast mover going at 55 miles per hour or so. And so please be in your safe spot there. This is, uh, I know we have a number of power outages as well. Uh, our Alicia Dover helping us out with that. But you can yeah, see I, I through that path. Do you have something, James? Yeah, so it's been paralleling 60. We're coming into Jacksonville right now. On, it, there's, it's just a lot of rain, but on the left side of your screen here, you're going to be able to see the lowering. Uh, I don't, the color difference is pretty tough to make out. All right. But, uh, we're, Do you see damage yet? Have you gone yeah. to uh, over a damage we path not, yet? We have not crossed the damage path. We have not crossed the damage path. There's a lot of people uh, who have stopped. Okay. It's just difficult to see, but I believe I see a tornado. It's hard to confirm it, from where we're sitting. Uh, you just based on off, based off our images. There's a lot. It's, it's, it's just on the south side of Jacksonville. Uh, there's a lot of rotation, James. Yeah, we're coming into the south right side at, of Jacksonville. Right at right, right at Main Street. You don't need to get any closer to it. So we're still we're still kind of down south towards the 440 interchange. Okay. Yeah, it looks to be just uh, up to the north of that. Some yes. So we'll either we'll either come across a damage path or, or not, and I'm hoping that we don't find anything. Well, okay. I think you're probably about at uh, at where it did cross. 
So right now, all I see is some traffic barrels tipped over. Yeah. At the 440 interchange, I do believe it probably crossed a little bit further north. Okay. We're seeing 33,000 without power, and it has followed that area that we saw just exactly so. That is a, and it, and, and the area, I'm just looking at it off screen here. It goes from, um, from Colonel Glen Road. Uh, yeah, and you can see the area there. Oh, God. It went right through along Chanel Parkway there, uh, Parkway Village area. It moved on the, uh, just to the southeast of the Pleasant Valley neighborhoods, perhaps, uh, as it crossed there between Big Rock Interchange and Cantrell Road. But it did cross, it appears, at that spot. And it is now, uh, you can also see power outages coming into the Jacksonville area. Yeah, it's still Jacksonville. Take cover uh, over there. Redmond Road, it's right there on Redmond Road, going towards Highway 5. Uh, and it's going to go, on, it's on the south side of 67167, by the way. Go ahead, Barry. I'm sorry. I just want to give well, you an Well, no, I'm just saying that that, uh, everywhere where this, this thing was obviously on the ground. Yeah, and, and I'm sorry. It's, it, you know, our Are homes have been affected by this. I got trees down. James. All right. James? Trees down. On 67. South side of Jacksonville. Tornado just went through. Okay. Yeah, that's where, the, that's where it is right now, the rotation. I got trees down right here on the south side of Jacksonville. Big trees broken off. We're on the outside of the damage path. You're on the outside of it? Yeah. South so we, side of we it? Got big, big trees down. Just south of Jacksonville, uh, traffic is stopped on 67. Okay, it will continue, folks, to go on up to the northeast of there, a small community of uh, the Jacksonville. You've got to be in your safe spot right now, Parnell, and uh, on up to the east side of Cabot. Uh, the road's out to the east of, of Cabot there. Uh, small community of Sylvania. Uh, and this, this is the area that we're, that we're looking at as it moves out to the east. So... Moving into Jacksonville right now, there's that rotating area, and it will be moving up, and it looks like the rotation could go to the south of Cabot and out to the east of Cabot there. So on the south side, there's 321, but it's in Jacksonville right now. Hey, guys, can y'all see what I'm seeing here? Oh, let's go to his life, What do you see? Y'all see this? Is that oh, something Got overturned? Big, big semi-trucks are overturned here on the freeway. Mm. I, it'll be a miracle if, if we kept everybody unharmed out of this. It'll be an, an absolute look. miracle. Pull up here, would you? I think we've had a violent tornado go through the metro. It'll be a miracle I've got, that's still I've got continuing. really big trees down, and that is 67 uh, southbound that is completely blocked. Okay. All right, Jacksonville has been hit by the tornado. What's next here? Uh, an area south of Cabot now? Yeah. Cornell? Yeah, it'll be going out. There's a small community of Red Oak and along Highway 321 uh, as it moves, as that first Cabot exit, as it moves off to the southeast of Cabot. I think this is the area. There's the rotation just northeast of Jacksonville now. Uh, Parnell crossing Highway 89 right there and then moving up in, into this area uh, in northern Lone Oak County. And so that is the area that you've got to take cover in. I'm going to show you the tornado warning area it's a broad area there and does include bb and so as this thing moves it could move a little bit to the north it could stay on this track that it's been on which has been fairly consistent but it's pretty much northeastern Bill, okay what do okay. we got northeast right now cabot especially the south side of cabot you've got to be in a safe spot right now please please take cover right now this storm could make a jog toward the cabot area so i'm just going to go ahead and say if you're in cabot go into the tornado safe spot. I think it's gaining in intensity again, South Cabot. Yeah. Uh, looking at the radar here, Red Oak is another community. It's gonna cross over 321. That's the tornado right there. That's the tornado, there's yeah. 67. It just cleared the Little Rock Air Force Base on the south side. This is where James is running into the damage. I mean, right there is right where it passed, and that's where James is. There's Cabot. Cabot, I, I think you may escape this, but not to the south of town. Uh, that's Red Oak, uh, McCollum Road, Highway 89. There is a tornado, very likely. In fact, I'm, I, I'd say there's a near 100% chance this is still doing damage on the ground. There's Parnell, 
and that's the tornado. Uh, and again, this is where James just had the damage. It is just past Jacksonville. Uh, again, the same applies uh, what we were saying about Little Rock. Stay off the road. Emergency personnel have got to get into these areas affected. This is a violent tornado. This was not your EF0 or EF1, no. This was a violent tornado coming across the Little Rock metro area, and they've got to go look for people that may be missing. Don't have any word on that, but I'm just saying that is a possibility. And as long as that is a possibility, we want everybody off the road. It's crossing over Highway 5, Parnell Highway 89, moving towards the northeast at a very rapid motion. Now, at about still about 50 miles per hour, tornado emergency continues, and this is going to go just to the south of Ward. Uh, I think Ward is going to be okay. You're on the north side of that polygon, but stay sheltered. Barry? Do you Tom, have we're anything? getting uh, some damage reports in. Brett Adair says that significant damage to homes and businesses <clears throat> at the shopping center at uh, I-430 and Rodney Parham. I-430 and Rodney Parham. Yeah, that's the, okay. And, um, and cars upside down there. So cars were sent over, and we've already seen along 67 up toward Jacksonville, a semi that was uh, toppled over there, uh, confirming some minor injuries at least. There's going to be a new severe thunderstorm warning issued for the Little Rock area. I don't see any, any rotation with it, but it will be wind and it will be coming through. And so it's right on top of where there was already uh, damage there and first responders are responding. So again, don't go anywhere if you, if you don't have to at all. Please stay off the roadways. Uh, to, to add insult to injury, Barry, heavy rain, thunder, lightning moving back into the metro now. Yeah. No tornado warning. Yeah, it's just all. a severe thunderstorm warning. That's. Uh, I don't even know if that's severe warned right now, but it is a thunderstorm. It's dangerous with lightning. So everybody stay inside as much as you can. Uh, and a lot of people don't have electricity, but no one should be outside right now in Little Rock because there's a lot of lightning. Our concern right now is eastern, far eastern Pulaski County now into Lone Oak County. Uh, this is a, a devastating tornado that has hit the heart of our community, uh, and it's moving south of Cabot by just a few miles. Uh, this is it on Highway 5. There's Red Oak on the ground doing damage, moving towards the northeast, a uh, little north of due east Mount Tabor. They're going to be crossing over 31. Okay. And now a severe thunderstorm warning for Pulaski. Barry? Yes, let, and we're not forgetting that storm there in Parnell. We've got uh, damage now at uh, Rodney Parham in 430, and uh, this is, a, I think we have a live, a live picture there, oh, and no. you can see the Kroger there, which is at 430 in Rodney Parham. That's that bank. In There's there. a bank in the parking lot there. If they could broaden out, and apparently they're damaged to homes as well in yeah. that area. My mom's home has a, has a, a tree through it too. Okay, there. and no. there is a uh, the service station that's right there. <clears throat> that's Breckenridge Drive. That's Breckenridge and Roddy Parham, right? Yeah, the new McDonald's is right over there. Breckenridge Village is uh, right across the street from there, and that's significant damage to the Colony West Shopping Center. Yeah. And it went right through Colony West and Breckenridge. <laughs> that's thunder from a severe thunderstorm warning. Uh, that thunder and lightning going on out there, but God, please, nobody be hurt out of this. Please. Okay, we'll go back to that if they can get, a, get more shots of that. I do want to say, though, if you're in the small community of Parnell or along Highway 321, this storm has really uh, re maintained its rotation unbelievably. There's a small community, uh, areas around Sylvania, out east of Cabot there, a large number of neighborhoods out there, large number of roads. Please be in your safe spot there as this storm continues to move. It will fluctuate with intensity, but the, as we said, there are going to be some... Uh, some times where this is Alicia. where tornadoes can be on the ground for a long time and apparently this is what's happened this parent cell started out well to the west of hot springs so that's what we mean by long track supercell uh thunderstorms and uh, do we have more pictures coming in yeah. and this is from where okay, this is in little rock uh, storyteller that's Caldwell shopping center no not that one no not 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 that one go to the next one that i sent i don't know where that is but the next one i sent Refresh it, refresh it, and, and, and there you go. Now scroll down. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. That's I, significant. It is significant damage, but I think I thought I just... Uh, I'm sorry. I thought I had it, but I did see significant damage to the Colony West Shopping Center where the roof was blown off. I'm trying to find that picture. I thought I retweeted it. Uh, here, here it is. Uh, I'm going to retweet it right now. 
Uh, and so it is retweeted, Chris May also did. And this is the Colony West Shopping Center. Hopefully it'll come up here, there it is. And that right behind there is Breckenridge Road. Look at all the damage. Um, that's, yeah. on the left side is Kroger. Uh, and that, uh, right, right through my neighborhood, my old neighborhood. It's destroyed. Folks, we're getting reports of injuries that are coming in. We don't know the extent of them, but uh, that's why we urge you to not be on the roads. Don't, uh, don't hamper first responders as they are out there. For right now, this is the only tornado worn storm in the state, but it is very, very powerful, and it is near that community of Parnell and headed toward the small community of Sylvania out to the east of Cabot right now, but that is uh, apparently uh, I, we just have to assume this is a tornado on the ground. It's a tornado emergency in that we've already had it. It is, uh, as we have told you, it is a large, it has been at times at least, a large tornado, and it continues to show that, that huge signature of rotation again. And there's nothing much out there to hinder it from forming again. I do want to back out, though, and I'll just show you the reflectivity. And there is another storm moving into the Little Rock area. It has wind with it, and I'm just going to look for the velocity product on this. I don't see anything as far as, but it's a strong storm just pouring where we already had uh, tornado damage that went through that area around Rodney Parham and 430. It went uh, up into the Highway 10 corridor and then crossed over, went very near the National Weather Service drive. So there's another storm, and it is a severe thunderstorm warning right there. Could be a lot of wind with that one and, and some hail as well. <clears throat> Excuse me, there is only one tornado warning in the state, and it is the one that is in to, out to the area east of Cabot. This is a long track storm. There's Dogwood Lane right there. This is uh, the rain wrapping around a circulation center. As it continues to move off to the northeast, it will continue to do damage, it appears. We've already seen large trees out on 67. Again, cancel your plans to go out and about over the next few hours. Just don't do it if you're in or near one of these spots. Just please stay off the roads. Here's a shot. I think we have another shot of damage uh, near. You can see it's just pouring, but this is that area around Rodney Colony Perth. West, I believe. And uh, so Rodney Parham and near 430 out in West Little Rock. That's and you can see just insult to injury there as roofs have been ripped off and it's just pouring rain. Barry, we also have pictures on Storyteller uh, from Breckenridge and Mark and, and uh, uh, Breckenridge and Shackelford. That's uh, right there on the right. That is a fire station on the right. This is Shackelford. Uh, those are the apartments on Shackleford right behind what was the old Kmart, uh, which is now a doctor's building. Uh, and look how the trees have been sheared off. This was a violent tornado. It is impossible to look at this and say that, and give a rating. There's that fire station right there. You see the destruction to the, to, uh, the brave men and women of the fire department. They've been hit with this uh, out in West Little Rock. Uh, this has hit the um, Arcade Drive area, the marketplace area, right up through Trellis Square into Colony West, Durbridge, Leewood is another place that this is impacted up towards Camac Village. Uh, Barry, uh, any the, good news with this? Is this weakening yet? I don't think it is. I don't think it is, but Todd, the storm that's moving into the Little Rock area, the south end of it, I think we need to watch. Is there another potential tornado with this? The Weather Service is watching it and they said this is an extremely dangerous situation to the ongoing search and rescue area and uh, it's, a, it's kind of an odd, the, the radar is not giving us a real clear picture, but very, just down to the south of where the damage occurred, there is some rotation. Rain is being wrapped around, and this is another storm moving through the Little Rock area. And I think, I think we need to watch this. I don't see any apparent velocities with it, but you can see how <clears throat> right there at Baptist, how there is that, this hook feature right here, it looks like it's trying to organize in an area that would be just to the south of the corridor that was just hit. Hopefully the, air, the rain uh, area has cooled this down to where it doesn't rotate, but folks here in, uh, in Little Rock, I think, we need, I, need, I think we really need to watch this storm along with the tornado-worn storm down to the south. I, I think it's possible, Todd, 
that could rotate again. Yeah, there's a boundary there. And uh, I'm afraid that we, we aren't done yet. Uh, <sighs> it's right out here where Rodney Parham intersects I-630. Yep, I'm getting in on that right uh, now. Area, and that would move it just to the south of the storm, of the track of that storm that was there. So I think this is something we need to... I don't see much in the way of rotation with that I don't right either, now. but uh, if you're it in the Little Rock area, I think we need to watch this very closely. I absolutely agree. And this is going to affect the downtown, midtown area, as well as North Little Rock. Uh, those are some of the places that are going to be affected by this. So uh, there's War Memorial Stadium. This is the area that has been impacted so horribly, right in there. And it's right on the south side of that. Uh, I don't see any rotation, but you're, like I said, we're not done yet, folks. This is going to last a few more hours. I think the severe threat for the metro will end soon, but this is not done yet. There's reservoir, and this is moving towards the northeast. So. I think areas where you, you see the path of that tornado went something like that. This is just south of that by a couple of mi miles, and it's paralleling I-630. Barrow Road is another place, Mississippi, Cavanaugh, the Heights, downtown Little Rock, and even right here at Channel 7. So I want everybody here at Channel 7 to know we're not done yet. No rotation on this storm, but it's in an area that could rapidly spin and produce a tornado. Um, Looking at this again on the velocities, that's the way that we can see which way the air is moving on this. And the there's the a speed. little there's a there's a little bit of rotation, not much on it yet, but uh, but you know but obviously it, there's a circulation center there because the rain's being wrapped around. Yeah, so I think it would be prudent right now. And it, some of these people may not have electricity. Uh, if you can text them and let them know, let's be on the safe side and stay sheltered for a little bit longer until we get this through here, folks. I think that would be the best course of action. Uh, uh, even as far south as UALR here, uh, there could be one. Let's go over to the s storyteller. Okay. What do we have? No, I'm nothing. I'm just. Okay. I'm just saying here at, uh, in the oh, central part of the city, we need to be aware of, of this storm. Okay. Yes. And, and, and here at Channel Seven. Uh, yes. We need to be aware of the storm for everybody here at the TV station. Uh, I'd want you to. to we really need to because there could be a tornado developing. It looks like it's detached that area of high reflectivity now, yeah. Barry, but uh, I, I'm still very cautious as you are about it. Yeah, I think the reflectivity is moving very uh, quickly up past here, and I see nothing that's, yeah. Uh, but again, we, we're still watching the one that's out in the Sylvania uh, area uh, and Butlerville east of Cabot, and so that is an area that is still troubling to us. It's within the tornado emergency. This is uh, the, the parent storm started out to the west of Hot Springs. It moved right through the Little Rock area and now is moving out to the east of Cabot. And so we're going to keep a close watch on that. I'll back out a little bit on it and give you an idea of the tail end of that storm. And you can see the rotation right there and then the, the inflow coming in the backside. So it's uh, right out along Highway 38, I believe that's 38. As it moves off to the east of Cabot, it will continue to move out to the east of town. Griffithville, eventually, you're not in the tornado warning right now. BB and McRae, uh, you're in the tornado warning, but this is south of you. The rotation area is down to the south of you. I'm going to watch this th storm also in the Little Rock area. I think uh, the atmosphere has been cooled quite a bit here, Todd, and this storm doesn't look as potent, but... Uh, as the other one did, for sure. So the tornado warning out there that we've been following now east of Cabot, coming into Butlerville, uh, some radar analysis with this. The debris signature with this seems to be spreading out. Mm -hmm. You can see that, which is an indication that the tornado might, I'm not saying it is, but the tornado might be off the ground uh, and has finished chewing stuff up. And so you're seeing the leftover part. Hopefully this thing is decaying. Uh, I'm not sure, and I don't, think that this day is over with for eastern and southeastern Arkansas. But this one storm obviously is the storm of the day. And I want every, it's in a very rural area. I know we have viewers there though, and I, we're gonna track this with you, but it's moving just, it's gonna move just to the west, northwest of Desarc. But there's a chance that this might be decreasing a little bit, but we see that it could increase as we saw the Little Rock storm rapidly increase. Uh, and that's the way that situation looks right now. Barry? Yeah, we'll just continue to watch that storm. That's the one that we're looking at. The National Weather Service is now uh, at the radar site getting another 
the north edge of this uh, other supercell, not what we saw, but it's getting a lot of rain and some hail, and then the, the trailing edge of it is moving down through the Little Rock area, but for now, we don't see rotation with it, but I'm, I'm just, uh, that's just something that I think we just need to keep a close watch on. I think it's moving right past our area here in Riverdale, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna zoom out our camera here. I'm just kind of watching, I'm just gonna leave this radar up here. We're still watching this area. <clears throat> this is south of where the last one went. And a lot of times when a tornado moves through an area, it stabilizes the atmosphere. You got a lot of rain, obviously, but to the south of it, you're getting into an area that maybe didn't have rain. And remember when we told you, not everybody's gonna see a thunderstorm today, but the areas that do, they will be very intense and long track storms. And that's what has happened as it has moved up through the Little Rock area. This one is the, the tail end of this will be moving. Uh, it's moving right past uh, Riverdale area of Little Rock right now and, and Rebsman Park and moving through, but we don't see any sign of rotation here. And looking outside, on our camera here, uh, I, don't, I don't see anything that is as worrisome, certainly, as what we saw earlier as that storm ramped up. But uh, I'm going to go back and show you the storm that is still tornado warned. As it moves from the northeastern part of Lone Oak County over into White County, and that's where it will be moving. Looks like the rotation center just to the south of BB right now. If um, you... Uh, if you're in that area, though, you've got, I, I think it's a broader area. The reds and the greens are farther apart than they were. They were very closely coupled earlier, Todd. Yeah, let's go to meteorologist James Bryant. I think he has some new information. This storm is weakening some. Go ahead, Barry. I'm, I'm sorry, James, James. Hey. Um, okay, guys, I'm in Jacksonville. This is where we had the tornado crossover 67. 67, part of it was shut down. does look like it's moving a little bit, but I just want to show you Hickenbotham Field. This is just the first place we stopped, and I just want to show you the damage is fairly widespread. This is just off the Redmond Road exit, and uh, just past the Redmond Road exit, the traffic is stopped uh, on the eastbound roads that are going east of Jacksonville. There's a lot of trees down. There's metal wrapped around um, buildings, and there's there's heavy damage here just at this one location where we just happened to stop. There's more rain and storms coming, so we're about to move so we don't get struck by lightning. We're going to backtrack the damage path as a strong tornado moved through uh, Little Rock, North Little Rock, and Jacksonville. Um, and this is nobody was hurt right here, and I only hope that's the case as we look back towards right. uh, the west and southwest. Back to you guys in the studio. All right. I think we also have, uh, do we have a, another live shot that we need to go to, Kristen? Uh, is this West Little Rock? What do we have here? Another live shot? Okay, this is Rodney Perry. Oh my goodness. All right, Barry, help me out. I'm trying to see what we're looking at here. And it's hard sometimes to get. Uh, okay, that's Colony West, the shopping center. Okay, that's on the, the shopping left. center, but looking out then to that's the northeast. The subdivision Colony West, and yep. that's going into Sturbridge, the yep. Sturbridge Pool. Yeah, um, right there. Yeah. Let's see what uh, that, those homes, that's, that's, uh, that's horrible damage. That is, uh, I'm, I can't put a number on it, but I, I'm going to tell you at least an EF3 uh, right around there. Just looking at that one picture, just, we can't do that. But it's, it's just horrible is what it is. Yeah. I don't, the EF number means uh, yeah. nothing right now. What, what matters now is that everybody just stays away and let people get over there and okay. respond. They have issued a new tornado warning now for that Literal. storm that has come, come through. A little more southern track. Oh, yeah. Okay. And it is... It is just on the north side. It looks like up along I-40. If we can get our uh, region's camera again, and uh, I'm going to, I'm going to move it just a little to the west. It looks like straight north of downtown, perhaps. Well, it may already be to the northeast there. There's another uh, area of rotation up around where. The I-30, I-40 split and moving up through the Lakewood area. And they've issued another tornado warning for that. And there it is right there. So this is I-30, this is I-40, and here is the trailing. And it's, it's going to be south of there by only two to three miles of where it was earlier. And this storm has uh, the National Weather Service. I'm trying to see what they're saying about it. It's moving off to the northeast, and it has the possibility of producing a tornado, not confirmed. 
Um, they've issued again in McCalmont or near Sherwood, and those are the those are the the signals going off on our phone that you hear in the background there. Uh, there also have been storms in Kamek Village. There is at least one house destroyed in Kamek Village. But this is the next one, and it's moving up through the Lakewood area. So a little south, Sherwood, Lakewood subdivision, this is the area that will be affected by this storm. It's the trailing edge right here. And like we said, we're not done with these storms today. Any storm that is on the south edge of this whole complex is getting warm, moist air. It's not rain-cooled anymore. And yet another tornado warning for the Little Rock area. Barry, I'm taking the camera, pointing it over there towards the airport. Is that where this is? I think, no, go north, go, of, oh, go okay. north of that. Go okay. left of that, yeah. right there. The yeah, that's... It's that, I think it's that storm right there. That that's the reason why they put the tornado warning. Yeah, we were, new if tornado, there was a tornado warning tornado, velocity. We uh, it's embedded. Yeah, it's embedded in, in rain. Yep. There could be a little, I don't know, there could be a little debris dropout even with that one. Yeah, there's a, uh, oh gosh. It could just be a, a radar dropout on there, but this is capable, folks. If you're in that uh, East McCain Boulevard, around the I-40, I-30 split, uh, Baptist Health, uh, North Little Rock would be in that area. New to tornado the, warning. To the north of I-40, uh, Lakewood, and then points off to the east, East McCain Boulevard over there as this moves off to the east. And there is some rotation within that storm right there. Uh, a little bit harder to tell, but I'm going to go back to the radar. It's already moving very quickly now. Tornado warning, new one here for, I think, uh, White County. Uh, this includes BB and Augusta and McRae. There is a new tornado warning in effect for that area, too. Uh, again, that's the tornado warning here in the Little Rock metro area. That's the appendage that we're following right there. And I want James Bryant is in the potential path of this. It's going to go just to the south of Jacksonville or near Jacksonville. Uh, so, again, that's in the potential path. Let me get up here a little bit. Uh, and it has that ominous hook signature to it here. And so, uh, again, that's the tornado worn storm. Furlough, Jacksonville, maybe as far south and east as Lone Oak. And we want you to stay in your tornado safe place now. But on radar, we don't see uh, a strong rotation, but that may be moments away and can be changing. Notice this as well, the new tornado warning, Barry. This is the storm that went through Little Rock. They did not issue a tornado emergency. They did not issue one saying there's a confirmed tornado. That's what you see in the purple. What you see in the red is what we typically see here in Arkansas. These tornado warnings were Doppler radars indicating one, which means this storm at the moment has kind of calmed down a little bit, but it still can produce a tornado without much notice. Todd, they're saying that we need to look at velocity scans that are way higher or pointing way up because it's so close to the radar That's side. That's a good point. Yeah. And I'm going to I'm going to go to that uh, I'm going to do that. There do the is same. a there's a signature yeah, out to the east with that I storm. I got it. Yeah, can you show that? It's this storm. So whatever it looks like down at the surface, we're we're going to shoot the beam up because it's so close to the radar image or radar site right there. So if you're in that area, you need to get in a safe spot. This side to the this time to the right side to the east side of uh, 67 167. Todd. This is the higher tilt. We've also got a report now of one injury uh, from the Pulaski County Emergency Management of this. We just got a report of one injury. Let's hope it stops at that. This is a, a higher tilt that kind of shows us where that rotation might be located. Uh, Barry, is that exactly where it would be? Because I'm uh, I'm trying I, to look I don't it, know. maybe it's, a little further along than that. It's displaced okay. from that. The, I is. think they're they're concentrating on on other storms and and. Uh, I'm just looking at that right there, and then I'll compare it here to the velocities. Uh, and, yeah, that would be it right there. I think there. out east of, 160, of 167, 167, east of Sherwood, yep. I think that, that's the area. Yep. So that right there. Yeah, that right out here. Echo. There's uh, 161 yep. right along there. And so this will go, Todd, this will go not that far south, but some south of where the last one tracked. If there is one, if there is a tornado being produced with this storm, yeah, we'll continue to watch it. It is a new tornado warning here in the Little Rock and North Little Rock area. We are uh, the the rotation is long gone from here. That storm is long past, and now it's out to the east. It does not have the signature 
perhaps that the other one that went through and obviously did a lot of damage uh, debris wise. I don't see anything with this storm, but there is rotation within that storm. It is a supercell storm and those little tails that we've talked about on these storms are troubling and right down at the, at the base, the, the point of that, that is the rotation center there. There's rain being pulled around that. And if it went through this area earlier, it would be this area uh, with this storm as it moves off toward the east. I'm going to see what the, the National Weather Service says about this. Um, yeah, they've not said anything more about it. Uh, there's, there's a lot of damage, folks, in uh, West Little Rock and in the area of Kamek Village and a Colony West and then moving over into North Little Rock. And there are some more of the damage pictures that we're, we're seeing, and it's just absolutely sickening. Yeah, it is. It is uh, sickening. That is the Colony West area, though, looking from that parking lot there where the, the Kroger is. That's Breckenridge Drive that heads yeah. north. And those homes there. So uh, obvious tornado damage and... and uh, that's you, catastrophic damage. I mean, is. that is, uh, that is defoliate, uh, no foliage on the trees and uh, trees sheared off. And so that makes you think it was a very, very strong tornado. Uh, we're, I'm sorry we paused, folks. We, we have friends and family who have been affected by this, that um, homes have been destroyed. And so if there's hesitation, we're trying to keep our composure too. Uh, but we, that we still have a job in front of us, and that's the, what you see behind me. Um, Jacksonville, there's the, that hook echo there. Uh, that other storm, the one that did come through Little Rock, and again, that's furlough. Let's hope that that weakens, but buried that has unimpeded flow into it, and it could start to rotate vigorously at any point because there's nothing to the south of it, and it's moving into that environment that is ripe for tornadoes. So the weather service is getting out ahead of it as they should. Now with the storm that moved through the Little Rock metro area, there's Georgetown. This is the tornado warning. Uh, it is no longer a tornado emergency, uh, but there's a radar indicated tornado and it looks like it's very disorganized right now. Griffville, there's West Point, Higginson, McRae. Uh, if there's a tornado, it's just out the Griffithville heading towards Georgetown. So Georgetown and White County, the far southeastern portion of White County, please go ahead and take your tornado precautions right now. It could ramp up in intensity and there's a new scan that just came in and it does not look as intense as what uh, it just did a little while ago, a few minutes ago, it was a half an hour ago when it came through the Little Rock metro area. But this is uh, heading towards Georgetown. Please take your tornado precautions immediately. Uh, just do it even though the rotation is not quite as strong as it was. Let's go back into the Little Rock metro area. In Little Rock, I'm gonna look at the radar here and see if we can sound the all clear, especially for those that are involved in the cleanup efforts and rescue efforts uh, ongoing. So Jacksonville, I don't see anything conclusive here and we're very close to the radar. There's the radar there, Sherwood, and I know we need to probably look up a little bit higher, but I think the storm is getting further away from the radar so that we should get a good sampling of this. So right now, the structure of this thunderstorm is very, very powerful. It's a supercell thunderstorm, and when it has this look in this environment, one can form rapidly. We saw what it did in Little Rock. It went from barely anything to a monster tornado just like that. That's what could happen. Not saying that's going to happen, but that's what could happen. Little Rock is no longer in the tornado warned area. Little Rock right now no longer in the tornado warned area, but it's eastern Pulaski County. This is the Lone Oak County line, Pulaski County, Jacksonville, furlough. That's I-40. It's just to the north of I-40 and getting ready to cross over Highway 5, that potential tornado. So uh, that's uh, the other one. Again, it's, these are the two supercells. We still have some rain to go in the Little Rock metro area, but Barry, I think the severe weather threat in the, in the immediate metro may be winding down now. Uh, so that's at least some good news, but still some lingering rain. So two areas, this one, if you had to rank them, this one is the less, uh, less uh, aggressive storm, least strongest, and this one is potentially getting going because it's entering into an atmosphere very favorable. This is why the PDS tornado watch was issued today for particularly dangerous situations for violent tornadoes. And that's exactly what we had, a violent tornado come through uh, the Little Rock metro area and it has a history of producing damage and it could tap into more energy 
produce another tornado at any moment, these two storms. And we will not feel like we're in the all clear until these storms get completely out of the Channel 7 viewing area. Right, we're going to be watching those. Uh, Jordan, I have more you have video. Have, more video take... of the tornado on Storytel. Yeah. This is, from... this is from our friend Joe Klein, <sighs> and he uh, was taking this from the clubhouse at Pleasant Valley. And... Man, you just, you do not want to see that. That is, a, that is a large, large tornado, folks. And it went south of the Pleasant Valley neighborhoods there, but it emerged out to where Rodney Parham and I-430 uh, come together. That's just, it's just, it's a gut punch, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. And, and uh, you know, you, you know, you, you never want it to hit. And you never want it to hit, especially in a populated area, and it has. And so... This is uh, what we're looking at right now. We're going to continue to watch these storms, but obviously that is a very large uh, tornado that has done considerable damage right here in, um, in Little Rock. Do we have live pictures? All right, let's... I don't know if we do, but if we do, let me know. Let's go back to the storms that are, are here and out to the east of Jacksonville. There is that a rotating area as it moves, continue, uh, will continue to move up Highway 5 or across Highway 5 corridor north of Furlough. And this will be just the, the tail end of this storm, which is certainly capable of producing a tornado. In, in most days, I would say, oh, yeah, they, they, there very well could be. Some, but a day like today, I think for sure, there, there could be velocity product on that, probably not as strong as it was, but that is an area that we're going to be uh, continuing to watch. It's not very far from the radar site, so we sh should be able to be seeing something, but there's inflow back to the radar site right there. So it would be very near the furlough area, I would say, with this tornado warning. Given the atmosphere that we have today, any of these storms could cycle down and then they could cycle back up. As it came, as the, uh, this cell came into the Little Rock area, we were saying, wow, this doesn't, look, this doesn't look like it had the rotation that it had earlier around Hot Springs. And then all of a sudden it ramped up into that monster tornado that we saw uh, come into our area there. So uh, up around Georgetown right now, uh, Augusta, over, uh, eventually over to around McCrory. This is still an area of concern. That's tornado warning. Augusta, you are technically in the tornado warning. Off to the east now of 67 corridor and to the south of the Cabot area, that is that area of rotation. And if you look, if you look at where the last, last one tracked, it was, it was just about two to three, maybe four or five miles north of where this one is tracking. I'm not saying that there's a tornado on the ground with that, but that is a supercell. Hello. And again, they, mm -hmm. can, they can have a tighter rotation producing a tornado and they can relax some too during their lifespan. The air out in advance of it is just warm and moist. It's just fuel feeding into this storm. And so that's why you see, and I'm gonna back out on this just a little bit, but go to your safe spot if you're in that area southeast of Cabot. This is the south side of this boundary that has gotten really, really active. So all this air down here is very, very unstable. You're starting to see some storms come out of southwest Arkansas. You may see others uh, just on the south side of this start to form. This is one of those days that uh, unfortunately will go down in weather history in Arkansas because all the ingredients come together. We don't get this very often. We don't get large tornadoes very often here. We get frequent tornadoes that are usually smaller. But today, uh, although there are just a few storms out there, I, I think these could be uh, both large and long, long track. That storm started way out here in northern Pike County. So it has possibly been producing a tornado for a, a, a good bit of that, maybe not in some instances, but it's the same exact storm. We saw one uh, not too many months ago, the ones that were up in Kentucky, and it started, it was about a year ago, it started, in, it started here in Little Rock. The supercell formed in Little Rock. We didn't have a tornado here, but it went all the way up to about Louisville, Kentucky. Same storm. And these are the storms that can be long tracked like that. There are other storms up into uh, the northwestern part of the state. I will have to watch those as well. The wind field is still uh, not great. But these are back behind this 
most unstable air mass. And so we're really going to watch this area out in east central Arkansas and keep a close watch on it. But for right now, the two tornado warned storms, we'll zoom into them. It's uh, north of furlough. And this is Graham Road right here. And this is Highway 89. And that is the circulation center. See that right there? That's it. It moves, continues to move off to the northeast toward Mount Tabor. And so I'm just going to zoom into that area right there. There's furlough, and it will continue to move off to the northeast. And if it is producing a tornado, we hope it's not, but uh, you need to be in a safe spot. And let's assume that it is. On days like today, it's not going to be there very long. You saw we tracked the storm that moved across the Little Rock area. It took that long to go through. We saw it. It was doing damage. Then it was just north of our station here, and then it was in North Little Rock and gone. Imagine a car driving at 50 or 60 miles an hour. It goes very, very quickly. And then on up to the northeast, uh, Griffithville over to Georgetown, trying to look at the velocity within this storm. There is still some outbound wind, <coughs> excuse me, near Griff uh, Georgetown there, but a very broad circulation. But I, I would say that area along Highway 36 near Georgetown uh, would be the area, if there is something, that's where that tornado would be. Uh, Barry, uh, I think that storm up there in northeast, uh, getting out of here, I, I just see things kind of calming down a little bit. I'm working on getting a phoner with somebody who's been affected in West Little Rock uh, to tell us exactly how it all unfolded, that hard hit area in the Colony West Sturbridge subdivision. But uh, the, the storm up there in Georgetown, the structure, as you've been saying, just does not look as intense as it did. But the one south of that, I think, is the one that, that could easily get going. Uh, and the tornado warning, we'll see if that gets extended. I have not looked, been able to see what the National Weather Service uh, has been saying about this. But um, do you have any? We're, yeah, there's. Uh... I want to let everybody know in the control room, we may have a, a gentleman call in here any moment. And that phone number that you provided me for Brett. Let me know when he calls in and we'll put him on the air and get that live shot ready, please. UAMS, uh, this is according to uh, Brett Crossan, U United States Air Force, uh, UAMS operating at level three mass casualty. Okay. I, I don't, I I don't know what that means. Procedure. I don't know what that means, but obviously there have been injuries. Uh, but hopefully uh, they are few and that that's just where they're going. I, I don't know what that is. We'll have to confirm right now. But it, when, when several uh, injuries start coming in, I know that the, the hospitals here do uh, ramp up their, their capability. Um, we will continue to watch the storm out to the east of Jacksonville. Uh, it is, there's no longer a tornado warning in Pulaski County. It has moved up in to that area out to the east of Jacksonville, north of furlough, and it does not look like it did. Uh, that is still the parent supercell, that kind of that secondary supercell, but it doesn't look like it did. And even the one that went through here doesn't look like it did. But look at this. Uh, there is still some tight rotation there out to the west of Georgetown on Jones Island yep. Road. So it's approaching the White River Valley right here. And if anything, that may look a little more worrisome than it did only a couple of scans ago. So these storms are going to continue, I think, to ramp up and ramp down. It's a little farther away from the radar site than it was, but you can see uh, kind of the trailing edge there and perhaps a little dropout in reflectivity where there could be some uh, rotation there along Highway 36. If you're in that area around Georgetown, please go to the safe spot in your uh, wherever you live down in the, the lowest floor, the most interior part. All right. We, Todd, do you have something? Yeah, I think that we should have that guy calling on the phone, guys. Let okay. me know when he's there and if we can get that live shot up from West Little Rock because we have an interview with somebody who went through the tornado. Uh, and let me know when he's on the phone. His name is Steve King, uh, and he should be calling here. Uh, and let me know if, in my ear if you have him. Uh, and if we do, we have that West Little Rock live shot. Okay, we'll continue to follow this one severe thunderstorm warning. Uh, Okay, well, let, please let me know when that happens and see if we get that live shot up and going again. Uh, do we have a video of that tornado? We did show that a little while ago. Do, we haven't shown that, Alicia. We continue to track this west of Georgetown, too, by the way. Uh, that, that's the one south of it there, east of Jacksonville. But it, that video on Storyteller of the tornado uh, as it moved through West Little Rock, uh, it was a, obviously, 
it sounds redundant, violent tornado. Uh, but this was a one. This is going to be on the upper end of the EF scale, most likely. A lot of damage. We do have one confirmed uh, uh, injury. I hope and pray it stays at only that. But I'm afraid that we're going to get some pretty bad news at some point. I hope that doesn't happen. But this has been a devastating day. Uh, for the Little Rock metro area. And I know many of you have seen this happen to your community, uh, and uh, we have uh, grieved with you, and, and uh, when your community hits, and, and now where we live has, has been hit with that. New tornado warning has been issued. Uh, so that new tornado warning, again, and, and the velocities with this one has not been all that strong, but the velocities, uh, at any moment, we could see this put down a tornado. Uh, and it could be trying to ramp up again. It could, uh, just to the east of Jacksonville. So this is a new tornado warning. Uh, Wadensaw, Mount Tabor, somewhere in this general area, when you get a better idea exactly where when you look at the, the reflectivity. It's in this area that a hook uh, is a little evident structurally on the, on the reflectivity here with the rain. Yeah, it looks like something uh, could be developing. And they're trying to get out ahead of this, uh, not because the velocities, they're not saying, okay, the velocities are so that we're strong enough, we're going to issue a tornado warning. No, what they're doing is they're saying, this is moving into an environment where this could easily spin up a tornado just like that and put down a large tornado. Uh, and that's why they're getting out ahead of this. So Jacksonville cleared from that one storm and it's moving off towards the east. A lot of farmland, hopefully not a lot of homes, but I want Desarc, that's one of the communities. Desarc, that's one of the communities that uh, could be impacted by this. And that tornado warning continues there up in the White County and portions of uh, Woodruff County. Uh, but this one continues here. Uh, uh, looks like it is just north of Interstate 40 uh, and north of Carlisle. This is going to go just to the north of Carlisle. That's the hook right there. Heavy rain, maybe some hail with this along Highway 31, moving towards the east at about, oh, probably 50 miles per hour, 60 miles per hour. And uh, I can do a storm track. Hickory Plains is another place. It's going to pass just towards the south of that. But Barry, I think the track on this is what, about 50 maybe? Uh, yeah. So Yeah, uh, about 50 miles there. per hour has been. Desarc, if it holds together, uh, about 358. Bisco at about 404. Brinkley at 417. And Goodwin at about 459. A lot of those are outside of the warning polygon, which shows you how sparsely populated that area is. But there, is, there are people there, and I know you're watching us. Get down seek shelter. This is a very serious situation as you have seen here. And our goal throughout today is to minimize the loss of life, the loss of or, or people getting injured. And there could spin up a tornado at any point. And I think that uh, if there is one, again, we showed you that hook and I continue to watch the velocities with this. And around Mount Tabor, that's the area that does not have strong rotation. But if it does develop, that's exactly where it would be at this moment. Uh, moving off towards the east at about 50 miles per hour. Um, anything else? I'm, I'm just getting flooded with pictures, as you are too, Barry. Yeah, the and I'm just, of yeah, I'm, I'm just hearing, hearing from uh, Steve Sullivan, uh, Breckenridge uh, Street, uh, uh, Breckenridge Road out in West Little Rock is, is blocked by a large, large tree, and there are several homes with extensive damage. Um, was hit pretty bad. I... Uh, his house out in that neighborhood, he says they're fine. And then uh, just some other other things coming in. But um, yeah, this has been a very large, large storm. Tail end of this storm, that's where we're looking out to the east of Red Oak now as it moves toward Highway 13, which goes all the way down to I-40 and beyond. And that is the, the area that we're, we're really concerned about now. And I'll, I'll just give you a point of reference uh, for you folks that are out in that area. Uh, as Todd was talking about, it's well north of Carlisle right now. It's the tail end of that storm. That's the rotation part of the storm. That is the kind of the core of rain and uh, possibly some hail with that as it moves off to the northeast. But this bottom part of it moving a little more east-northeast rather than northeast as tornado producing storms or supercells do sometimes when they're producing tornadoes. And we continue to watch uh, this area out there. Uh, a lot of video coming in, the, uh, the damage is going to be extensive up into White County. I believe they have let that tornado warning uh, expire. Um, North Little Rock uh, on Oak Ridge, uh, we're hearing of houses that were destroyed. Here's another a point here 
uh, from a, a friend of mine, corner of Ethan Allen Drive and Green Mountain gas leaks. That's another thing to consider too. There are going to be gas leaks. And, and power lines down. Mm -hmm. Very dangerous in the aftermath uh, with this. So there's a, they just put in a, a severe thunderstorm warning. Uh, I just noticed that Barry. So that at least, uh, the, it looks like they may be issuing that instead of tornado warnings possibly. Uh, yeah, it's possible. And right. I, would, I would hope so that one tornado warning is no longer in effect uh, towards the north up towards Georgetown. We still have two. It's really one because one replaces the other. Um, and so that's the only storm we're looking <clears> at. But uh, again, in the Little Rock metro area, I'm going to say this again. And you, hate to, you hate to hear this, but uh, there's another area thunderstorms coming right at us, uh, especially Conway, Maumelle, maybe even to Little Rock. It's moving nor more northeasterly. They are not severe, and I don't think they're going to produce a tornado, Barry. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this is moving in where the air has been probably uh, turned up a little bit. It's a little bit more stable in this area. I think the tornado threat is how, now obviously where the, the leading edge of the storms are located, located. We also have tornado warnings coming up now in southwest yeah. Arkansas that we have to keep an eye on, too. That's Hempstead County. That's not in our viewing area, but uh, possible tornadoes there. This is going to be a long evening. Uh, for, I think for the next three or four hours for southern and southeastern Arkansas, Barry. Yeah, those are areas south central Arkansas where there's been no rainfall as of yet, but there is uh, far southwest Arkansas. Those are the kind of storms that are kind of out by themselves that we're going to have to keep a close watch on. And yeah, this whole area then in south and eastern Arkansas, uh, until this this energy that is moving through this area, until it exits, and I still don't think this will last all night long at all, but we're talking about, I would say, Todd, wouldn't you say around the next three hours or so? I do. I, three I, to three and a half hours, and, and I think then the, the energy field that's really producing this, I think, will start to relax for us. It'll and move, it will, it will go east. off towards the north, uh, so yeah. I think what you're going to see are these thunderstorms that will have severe thunderstorm warnings on them and not tornado warnings, but I still think we're hours away from that happening. Uh, getting new video in here that I hope uh, Alicia Dover can get uh, well, there, this John is a Starling. live shot on our RDOT camera, okay. iDrive Arkansas camera on I-430 is still blocked. Yeah. So don't don't go to I-430. You yeah. can see the traffic moving on Rodney Parham there very slowly as well. Okay. Nobody's answering the phone in the control booth when, uh, they, when uh, that guy's calling that number. If somebody could watch, I'm going to ask him to call again. Uh, but if you, I know there's a lot going on back there. You guys have been an important part of this. But I just want to let you know that phone. Uh, saying nobody's answering, he hopefully will answer. Uh, I'm, I'm going to put that video on Twitter uh, here in just a second, but that's where you can get it. But now we have a new severe thunderstorm warning, which includes northern Clark County, southern areas of Pike County, and a new tornado, uh, sorry, severe thunderstorm warning, northern areas of Saline County, far western Pulaski County, into southeastern areas of Perry County, moving into southern uh, 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 Faulkner County. That's a severe thunderstorm warning for hail and wind. We'll watch for the tornado threat. Tornado watch is still in effect. But Barry, uh, this storm here, uh, do you have any new information on that? I'm going to get this video uploaded. Uh, it's a pretty incredible video of that tornado. And guys, let us know when Steve calls in. Yeah, <clears throat> you're talking about the, the storm out uh, north of Hot Springs right now? Uh, the, the one no. near Car north of Carlisle. Okay, yeah, Hopefully that's the tornado dying out. Storm. Yeah, that's, right. And that's the only one in our viewing area right now that does have a, a tornado warning on it. There are other storms out to the southwest, and I am going to concentrate on that one as it approaches Desarc. So Desarc, you're over here. You're not technically in the tornado warning, but this is the, the south side, or the, this is the tornado warning. So coming right up through the middle of it, it would be in uh, Desarc in not very long time. We're talking a distance of maybe 12 miles, so it's about 12, 13 minutes away if this is producing a tornado. This is the, uh, the storm that kind of the secondary storm that then moved through the Little Rock Metro, kind of built as it came through, and it became the predominant rotating one. The one that came through the Little Rock area is on up now around Augusta, but it's not tornado warned at all. So this is the one that's just kind of one row south of that in this area that has not had rainfall, and it will be moving through Desert. So there's a severe thunderstorm warning on it, but there's also the tornado warning, and that's for the, rotati the rotating part of the storm down to the south. Out right. to the west, still watching another storm to the west of Little Rock. It's severe thunderstorm warned. The tail end of this storm that's now near Fountain Lake is trying to rotate. 
I don't see any rotation on it of note yet. No. But folks, we're going to have to watch storms like that. that that's an area, though, where that, tor that tornado warned storm and that tornado went over, Barry. So yeah. hopefully, the, the, the hopefully this is a cooled over. area. It's trying to go, grow vertically, but hopefully, since it is exactly where the one that hit Little Rock went, the air is very, very cooled in that area. But these storms in southwest Arkansas uh, have not had that same thing happen with the, with the rain uh, cooling the atmosphere. Again, we have another tornado warned storm. It's well down into southwest Arkansas, but we'll watch it as it moves toward our uh, area. The tornado warned storm, though, is still the one that is north of Carlisle. That's Highway 13, and the rotation is moving right across it. So Hickory Plains, you're kind of to the north of the circulation center, pouring rain there, plenty of wind. The circulation center is right there and it will move on over off to the east, and that would be the one that would eventually move over toward Desarc. I'm gonna look at the velocity on that. <coughs> it is uh, rather, rather broad, but it is still, you can see the mesocyclone, the, the larger area that is rotating, and then we look for smaller area of rotation that is within that. You see the base of the cloud, you see one part of it lower down, that's where the tornadoes come from. And you'll see tons of video of the tornado that went through Little Rock, but I'm seeing pictures of it. And uh, this was a very, very large tornado. And it, it shows, it shows that lowering, that wall cloud, and then it shows the tornado coming down there. Yeah, um, Barry, uh, I, again, the, the tornado warning, as you said, we've been tracking that one. The, the, the structure that, that we see with the reflectivity is pretty, pretty incredible. Are we starting to see something maybe get to get its act together? You see these greens and these reds. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, it it's has concerning. looked like that for a while. That's why I say in Desarc you need to be De shelter. taking shelter. Yeah, Desarc, you're not officially in that tornado warned storm. But I'm going to, as we told you, we were warning Little Rock when this storm was in Hot Springs that this was going to come through the metro. There was nothing to stop it. The same applies for Desarc. A new severe thunderstorm warning has just been issued. Uh, as you saw that yellow box pop in, but there's also that red polygon for the tornado warning. I'm not saying there's a tornado desert, but what I am saying is that it could happen very quickly without much notice. That's why the warning is in place to give you that notice. It's not happening most likely right now, but it could develop very quickly. These things have a habit of developing between scans. We're getting scans every 60 seconds. That's how fast it develops. So Desarc, here it is at 342, maybe buses are out. Everybody needs to hold tight right now until this storm passes. Uh, continue to watch uh, uh, the Little Rock metro area. Uh, uh, the thunderstorms are moving through. The tornado threat is there even for Little Rock, but it's not as high as it was earlier, obviously, where we had that tornado. Want to watch the area too near, uh, just north of Hazen, I believe. Uh, uh, just looking at some of the uh, uh, Sand Hill, another place there along that path of the uh, the severe thunderstorm. There's the velocities. I'm just looking here, um, Barry. Just I, I, it's just it has that look on the reflectivity but, out west of Desert. Yeah, yeah, it really does. And that you see it's rain free. It's not even raining in Desert. Yeah, but you hear it. You see it just to the north of town. That's become the predominant uh, uh, supercell. Yeah. The, that is not the one that went through Little Rock. That is on up to the northeast and is not warned anymore. We do have our meteorologist, James Bryant, who has been uh, kind of first on the scene with the damage that as it moved across 67 toward Jacksonville. Now you're in North Rock. James, are you there? Tell you, as a North Little Rock native um, who grew up here, this is hard to see. Now we had the North Little Rock tornado in 2008 that followed a similar path right up towards the North Little Rock airport. But I'm just gonna start right behind me and we're just gonna show everything. So this is off Military Drive. You're looking back into Burns Park. We're at Military Drive and Parkway, right where Cozy's shaved ice is. Um, and the damage is extensive. Now there are houses still standing right here and that is a good sign. But I think further back in there, we will find damage that is worse to some of those houses back in there. Obviously, there's power lines down. Um, North Rock police have closed Military Drive. MIMS is on scene. 
Um, and I, I think there are some reports of some injuries from back in there, but there's major damage to some houses. There's some large trees down back there. The smell of natural gas is strong. Um, and actually, if you can look down this rail line, Charles, there's there's debris all over the um, all over the rail. Um, now, there is some heavy equipment down here that is uh, beginning to move some stuff. I think Union Pacific has already begun the process of clearing off their um, their train tracks here. And then, Charles, if we can just look straight back this way, we can kind of get a glimpse of the North Little Rock Police Department, the North Little Rock Fire Department working there at that gas station. The tornado did continue up that direction, and the damage is heavy. Um, large trees are down all along its path, and we can uh, really uh, just take a 360 and look because there's damage everywhere. And I, I just want you to look right here um, at the uh, train crossing. There's water. Um, there's uh, not water. There's a, a wire wrapped around it. And uh, I'm looking back towards Military Drive. I think this was a fairly strong tornado as it crossed um, I-40. It would have crossed I-40. And I really hope that we did not experience any loss of life because the property damage is bad. I have gotten um, I have gotten pictures from Cary Road in North Little Rock. The damage there is extensive to some houses on Cary Road. That's off of JFK. I've seen pictures from West Little Rock, Rodney Parham. I-430 is still shut down. The tornado was, uh, we got a lot of pictures of it from the West Little Rock area. I saw the tornado from uh, the McCain Mall area in North Little Rock, uh, looking off towards the northwest. It became wrapped in rain as it went through Jacksonville. Very difficult to see, but I have video of that too, as it crossed uh, the freeway and uh, hit Hickenbotham Field in the Jacksonville area, and there was a large emergency response underway when we left there. Again, I'm just going to let Charles kind of let the images do the talking. I want to show you the power pole over here where uh, there's sheet metal wrapped around the bottom of the power poles. Definitely a violent tornado, or maybe not violent, but very strong tornado that moved through right here. Um, again, this is Military Drive in North Little Rock at Parkway, and North Little Rock police have closed Military Drive back into Burns Park. Uh, MIMS and the fire department are on scene. And uh, Charles, again, let's just take another zoom way back in there, because that's where the worst damage is. Um, with the, the extensive tree damage. Um, I, I, there's, if you wanted to find a good sign here, um, there's a lot of houses I'm looking at here that are still standing, heavily damaged but still standing, so it's survivable if you were in, inside the house. Lots of big trees are uh, down and sheared off at the tops, but uh, I'm not seeing um, debark trees or anything like that, so that's some good news. It's going to take a while to clean this up. This tornado began in West Little Rock, moved right through North Little Rock, came very close to the North Little Rock Airport, and then uh, also went down to uh, the Jacksonville area before it uh, hopefully began to lift. But we're going to continue to kind of scout this area for damage. Again, North Little Rock native, I grew up here. I've been here since I was two years old. I did see uh, up close the damage that uh, we had in uh, 2008. If you remember the North Little Rock EF2 that hit uh, the airport, I mean, you really hate to see this, um, especially coming from someone who's been here a long time. So, guys, we're going to continue to um, update you out here. Um, I, I can confirm some injuries occurred back in this subdivision right here. I'm hoping that we don't hear of any deaths. Um, that's what I'm really hoping for. Yeah. So, okay. I'll send it back to you. We'll continue to look over things out here. All right. James, thanks. That is, that is oh, no. uh, it's terrible. And it, it, west of Desert right now, it, it's, this storm is ramping up. It's it really is. wrapping around. If you're in Desert, please take cover. If you're anywhere along the highway, Highway 11 there, please take cover with this storm. I think it, is, it has gotten uh, remarkably more powerful, and the velocity signature on it now is uh, way stronger than it was. Outbound winds really wrapping up, and some uh, inbound there in a very small area. So Desert and points just to the north. I would say, even though you're not technically in the tornado warning, be warned. And everything out to the west of Desert, this is a tornado warned storm. I'm sure this will be extended and will take in Desert. So go ahead and make plans to get into your tornado safe spot. It's happening again. It, yeah. I'm afraid it's ramping up again. It's, yeah. It, I, Desert, you're not under an official tornado warning. You're going to see that pop up new tornado warning and you're going to be in it. So get ahead yeah. of it. Uh, go to the interior of your home or your business, put as many walls, again, between you and the outside. This has the potential to develop and uh, produce a violent tornado. Uh, and when this, you see the velocities come together, that is a classic looking supercell. Uh, I find it very hard to believe that this won't produce something at some point. Yeah. Uh, it's not even raining in, in Desert. 
Uh, the storm is mainly towards your north, the high winds, the hail, but this is it right here. I mean, that is a very strong, there's the new tornado warning. Told you that we get issued. Very high potential now. It is. And so uh, if you know anybody in Desert, please call them, text them. If you know, if you have friends or family, any distant connection to anybody in Desert or any of the surrounding communities, I'm just saying Desert because that's the most populated area on this map, but I know there are other towns in here, small communities. Let them know that a tornado is developing and heading towards them. You have seen what it has done in Little Rock, and I'm, I pray it doesn't happen to you, but this has got a very bad sign to it, a, a very bad look. It looks like Desert is going to be hit uh, definitely by a thunderstorm. High winds, yes. Uh, whether it's high winds or a tornado, it can do damage. So take your tornado precautions now. Uh, do we have a, a, a rate of speed on that, Barry? And I'm going to do a storm track on that to see how far uh -oh. out it is. Um, I'll, I'll check it. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably have to back out because it's, it's moving almost due east. Uh, so that's another thing. It's 60 a right miles per hour. That, that's incredibly fast. And I hope I can catch that with the, uh, with the radar or the uh, cone here. But, yeah, I can. So here we are at 60 miles per hour. That puts it in Desarc. It's 351 right now. So Desarc 358, Cotton Plant at 412, Goodwin at 425, Four City outside of the Polygon area. A lot of these communities are because it's outside of, uh, it, it's moving so rapidly at 438, Widener at about 444. So Desarc 358, that's an estimation because uh, they speed up, slow down, they move, they zigzag, they zag. So if you got about five minutes. Uh, Desert. I want you to get uh, to your interior of your home, put as many walls between you and the outside. Let's get a, an exact fix as to where this uh, could be located. Um, let's look at the radar. I think it's if there's a tornado, this is where it's going to be located, right? Barry, correct me if you think somewhere else, but I don't, I'm having problems uh, getting the radar to zoom in, but I think right here south of Highway 38. Yes, that, that's exactly that's where the it area, is. That's West Bell Road. There's Childers. That's the developing tornado right in there. And Desert, it's less than five minutes away. But this is developing. You see a lot of wind here. Uh, the radar is in North Little Rock. So you see a lot of air outbound winds, and then you're going to start to see it wrap in like this. And you're going to get that counterclockwise circulation, the mesocyclone, and then the tornado uh, if there is one. Uh, so again, uh, our concern now shifts into eastern Arkansas. This is a, a particularly dangerous situation this afternoon. And that's, I think, the only tornado warning in our viewing area. Uh, let me back out and make sure. Yes, it is the only tornado warning in our viewing area. Uh, so that's, we're going to stay on for you. Uh, and, and, and if anybody knows somebody there, now is the time to take their tornado precautions. All right. Uh, Hopefully just, we'll see that, that velocity, the, that uh, rotation start to die some, but it hasn't as of yet. We're getting, uh, we're going to be showing some more and Todd, I'm going to send you some video and maybe we can pull it up. But um, I would say uh, about three quarters of a mile just up the road on Rebsman Park Road uh, here, uh, there is extensive damage. We saw that tornado move just to the north of our station here. And we're going to, we're going to, yeah, this is, uh, yeah, if we could take Storyteller, this is Breckenridge Road in West Little Rock. And okay. our own Steve Sullivan is out videoing oh and showing gosh. the damage there, but you can see how extensive it is. Roofs ripped off, a lot of debris. There's Baptist in the background, just yeah. to give you a reference. Yeah, so he's looking off to the southwest there. Ugh. But it's just um, we it's have Desmond. terrible. Desmond's live right now out in Rodney Parham. Okay. Uh, let's, can we, Desmond, uh, where are you and what do you see right now? Todd, I'm actually right on the side of uh, Kroger uh, off of Rodney Parham. And as you can see behind me, I'm going to step out the way. This is a neighborhood directly behind the Kroger off of Rodney Parham. You can see there's a lot of damage. There's trees that have been falling down. There's a couple homes that are just extremely destroyed. Uh, there is just a lot of damage everywhere. There are uh, Little Rock police is on the scene, Little Rock fire police is on the scene. Uh, you also have the state troopers that are also on the scene. There's a lot of first responders that are out here just trying to make sure that people are okay. You have people with chainsaws just trying to make sure to see if there's anyone under that debris. Uh, we don't have any confirmation as of any damage, uh, if, if anyone is hurt at this particular time. Again, uh, this is a very active scene. We will bring you more whenever it becomes available. Back to you.
you very much for that. Uh, again, uh, heartbreaking scenes of what's happening right now. We're also told that the police department has closed a lot of the access into that area. Uh, a lot of bad things are happening right now, gas leaks and things like that. It's a very dangerous scene. Desarc, uh, Barry, the, uh, yeah. the newest scans on this in Desarc. Uh, yeah, it, it doesn't look quite as organized. No, maybe. but I, if you're in Desarc, I'd say Stay go ahead. sheltered. Oh, yeah. gosh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's lifting just to the north of town. And I have meteorologist Brett Adair. Uh, he said he just asked me Desarc in your area. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna try to pull up his live shot I'm, I think he's on the storm. So I think we're gonna be able to get a there Is that Brett? Okay, I just told him it is and so you're looking at uh, I-40 So I just want everybody in Desarc to know we are watching this storm uh, with meteorologist Brett Adair and our partners at live storms media who brought you that uh, He says full res tornado video is up. Um, Barry, I think that's you, on storm scan. I'll download that. On okay, go ahead and do that. And we have our uh, James Bryant, also our meteorologist in North Little Rock, who just showed us damage pictures. He's got uh, someone there, I think, to talk to. James? New All tornado right, guys, warning, so Clark again, County. I'm off of Military Drive, and I want to talk to a family. These are three brothers. Guys, what are y'all's names? Dustin. Robert. Robert. I'm Audrey. I'm Audrey. All right, these three, these three boys were in this house, this white house back over here by this white truck. Um, and I want uh, them to tell you, um, guys, how did you get through this tornado? I want to tell, just tell us what you saw. Well, I was in the living room. We, we was all doing something. And then we heard the wind and then our dad, he immediately, he immediately woke up from his nap and told us to go to the bathroom quick. But then we came out the bathroom and we saw that our whole house was destroyed. And it was like broken down, like like the bricks had fall off, the window like crashed through, like stuff like that. And you guys were in the bathroom, correct? Correct. Was it the middle of the house? Mm -hmm. It was mm -hmm. in the middle of the house. Yeah, that's, that's why um, our biggest piece of advice is to go to the middle of the house. Bathrooms are often best. Charles, I just want to pan, and I want again. I want to show the scene, guys. Thank you for talking to us. Military Drive, really, as far as you can see right now, there's significant damage, and there's a row of houses here with a lot of damage, and it's these big trees right here that have um, that have really caused most of the damage. These trees are uprooted. Charles, if you can pan and look towards the McDonald's and the Valero, we can see the tops of those trees that are sheared off. Um, and there's a big emergency response underway over there uh, by that Valero and by that McDonald's. Um, you see the heavy equipment here. They're trying to clear roads as best they can. That's uh, the North Little Rock Fire Department and uh, Police Department and MIMS are all right here. But uh, this is a pretty long track tornado that began in West Little Rock and came all the way through North Little Rock. Um, again, you just heard from, from three boys. They, they got through this in the middle of their house in the bathroom and I hope we hear more stories like this um, and I hope we don't hear about any injuries or anything worse right. so guys we're gonna keep walking around military drive There's significant damage here in this part of North Little Rock uh, back to you all right James thank you so much uh, new tornado warning has been issued boy that's powerful stuff there I'm so glad those guys are okay New tornado warning issued for Clark County. The storm is not in Clark County yet, but it is back to the southwest. And this is a supercell that will be moving in to Clark County uh, coming up and, uh, and across uh, the southeastern part of Pike County as well. But that is a new tornado warned storm. Getting video now in of the tornado as it went through West Little Rock. Uh, and Todd has that. Yeah, uh, if we can go to storm scan. So we look at these cells again, still in that severe weather. This is. From our lives, if we can get Brett's name up there, by the way, I don't know if we can. I don't think it's all that important right now. But this is the tornado moving in. There's West Little Rock. That's where the old Kmart used to be located. It's a doctor's office now. 10 Fitness, that's as it came over the hill, and he told us on the air, saw it, touched down, and confirmed it to us. And there you see the 10 Fitness. He's on Rodney Parham there. This is earlier. I want to make sure I'm clear on this. This is not right now. This is, this is pre-recorded. Uh, that's where he's going across. This, he's right there. He's in the direct path of the tornado that went right through there. There's the Olive Garden. He got onto I-430 South, and uh, he's also got video damage, I think, on the end of this video. We'll just stay with this. The Clark County, we're following that potential tornado coming at you but uh, uh, from the Southwest, but he's also got video. 
uh, that we're going to be look at, looking at. Uh, Brett and his partners, the damage after the tornado has passed there in West Little Rock, a significant one. And I th also think that we're going to have some video from Alicia Dover on story. I don't know if we ever showed that earlier, but there's the damage of an overturned car. I know that's at Rodney Parham. That's Colony West. Uh, that's a shopping center there uh, with all those uh, shops. And to the left is Kroger. Uh, right there is Kroger. And there's a bank that is separated from there off on the left, separated from the shopping center, which is in the parking lot. So again, this is the <coughs> destructive tornado from meteorologist Brett Adair, Live Storms Media, as it came into the Little Rock area that we followed with him and our live cameras. Now, that video, do you have that? Of the, We had the embassy suites in the background in West Little Rock. Here's video on Storyteller that we have. I'm not, what is this, Alicia? This is West more Little West Little Rock damage. Not quite sure where this is located, um, but it is, of course, tornado damage. Uh, yeah, the one that, because it's a good marker. That's highway, that's Cantrell Road there. Uh, yep. That's Purple, Purple Cow, Cow on, yeah. on yeah. Cantrell Road. Yeah, that's our, that's Purple Cow, Foxcroft. You mentioned that on the air. Yeah, Foxcroft, uh, Foxcroft and that, that was, area. was right where the rotation was. and yeah. uh, Reservoir, that makes sense because that's what came up out of Colony West and Sturbridge and moved up over Cantrell towards Camac Village. Right. That makes complete sense. And I think she's going to also bring up the video, uh, again, a lot of access to this is at, down. You can't get into these areas anymore, thank goodness. As we do this, uh, north of Desarc, you are still, let's take this really quick. North of Desarc, this is still uh, a possible tornado producing thunderstorm as it moves off to the north, uh, probably north of Cotton Plant, but this is a tornado warning. So Cotton Plant, I want you to keep an eye on this storm and all just the circulation center maybe just barely north of Desarc and moving off to the east there. The severe thunderstorm warning part of it has been uh, kind of extended northward, but that the rotating part is what we're talking about. And so between Desarc and Cotton Plant and just to the north of Highway 38 there, uh, and that still looks like, Todd, to me, that there could be uh, a tornado within that. Please get into the lowest floor of your home as this uh, moves past the White River and moves off onto the, uh, to the northeast. So we're going to continue to watch that storm as it moves east. Yeah, and uh, the velocities, the velocities <laughs> on that barrier are, are very scary now. Uh, we're starting to see yeah. that gate to gate there. Yeah, so south Kinda, of Georgetown, yeah, northeast south of, Georgetown. of Desarc. And so Desarc, I think, is almost in the clear with this. Here's the video from Alicia, uh, that we, that West Little Rock, and uh, this is, I believe, <coughs> Chanel. At some point, I'm not sure because I saw the embassy suites in this video at some point. Um, is that that okay? I'm, that's from where the butcher shop is located, looking off towards. I'm trying to get my bearings right with that. That's Chanel Parkway right there. Yep, there's the Embassy Suites. Uh, and so there it is moving away. And uh, the tornado as it moved through West Little Rock as we tracked it. Again, that's video from earlier. Uh, that same storm is now moving into northeastern Arkansas. As uh, again, uh, we're still cleaning up. A lot of people are not even allowed into these tornado hit areas as they're still making sure everybody is accounted for. All right, Live Doppler Network. Again, following this one tornado worn storm, the latest scan, I, I see a lot of disorganization with this. Uh, thank goodness when I look at the velocities, it's hard to pinpoint anywhere, but so you got to look at the veloc or the reflectivity, and that is where there would be a tornado. North of Sand Hill, there's Desert, Daggett, Howe. It's moving in that location. We'll be crossing over Highway 33, uh, that potential tornado. Notice it's a red polygon and not a purple one. It's a tornado warning. Doppler radar indicated no confirmation. One is on the ground. If it was purple, that would mean it's confirmed tornado, either by a spotter or a radar confirmed. There's debris. Uh, Clark County, we're going to have to watch these storms coming up from the southwest. Uh, let's go back to this. And, and uh, this looks like it's now moving into northern Nevada County, uh, north of Prescott, along I-30, which we're going to have our cameras, our iDrive cameras, that may be able to see something with that. But that's the potential tornado. So Kelowna, there's D-Light. That's it right there. Blevins. Uh, Prescott, I think it's going to go just north of you. You're not even in the tornado ward polygon right now. There's Gurdon in southern areas of uh, Clark County. And there's Interstate 30 to give you a kind of a location setting of where this is. That's the tornado south of D-Light moving towards the northeast. Arkadelphia is not in the tornado warning. You're right on the edge of it. But I want you to pay attention. Get ready to take your tornado uh, safety precautions now. Uh, in fact, I would start planning that now. Where would you go? 
because this has a, a look of a tornado. It's far away from the radar, but there could be a tornado in that. Let's look at the debris. Nothing conclusive with that at all. It'd be tough to see anything that far away. And when we look at the radar, that's the, uh, the hook right in there. Oklahoma, take your tornado precautions, and uh, especially up towards Highway 51 going into Arkadelphia. So Highway 51 uh, on the north side of I-30, uh, that's the potential tornado. Going to check with our friends at the National Weather Service and see if we have any confirmation of one. Um, there's persistent rotation, and uh, there's also no confirmation. And the new storm just west of Ferndale, Barry, uh, outflow boundary out ahead of it. They're watching it closely, but it's slightly elevated. So there's another storm that's coming into the Little Rock metro area now, but it does not have a severe thunderstorm warning. At least I got to check and make sure on that. Don't quote No, me. it doesn't. Okay, but just want to let you know there's another storm coming into the metro. Uh, there it is up at the top of your screen. Uh, and they're watching it, but it seems to be elevated, which means it would have a very difficult time producing a tornado, but there's lightning in it, which makes it dangerous, especially for everybody who's outside with this cleanup and search and rescue efforts that are ongoing, especially on, uh, through the Little Rock metro area. There's the tornado worn storm. It will be moving out of the Channel 7 viewing area soon, but it still has a way to go through Woodruff County uh, and Desert. I think you're pretty much in the clear with that uh, for now. And then our attention turns to Southwest Arkansas. There's a lot of air that hasn't been touched all day today by rain in southeast Arkansas. And so what I think is going to happen here, uh, hopefully what's going to happen is that these thunderstorms, as we get closer and closer to, to uh, sunset, the energy with this will start to shift towards the north of the state, which will make the tornado threat lower, continue the severe weather threat, but the tornado threat will be a little bit lower. And this watch, by the way, the tornado watch, does go into effect un until 8 o'clock. So that would probably be the timing that we'd see the, the dynamics for tornado producing storms start to dwindle in our area of the country. Um, but those are the two storms we're following right now. And I, I can tell you right now, I've had about, um, I don't know about you, Barry, a couple hundred text messages from people checking yeah. in. Um, and so far, yeah. one injury, I gotta hope it stays that way. Uh, one injury out of this that we know have confirmed. If our news department hears of anything else, please let us know. But let's hope it stays like that. Yeah, uh, so much, so much destruction. Uh, if we can take Storyteller real quick, this is from our friend David Basil. I told you that it was not very far from here that we had damage, and this is along. Uh, we're gonna show it again. Yeah, there you go. And this is just up Rebsman Park, headed out toward Maury Lock and Dam. <clears throat> you can see how the trees were sheared off there uh, after coming down off the mountain there uh, through Kamek Village. And then uh, you can see how the tornado obviously touched down there and as it crossed the river, and that's the area it crossed the river. And I promise you that uh, is maybe a mile, maybe less than a mile from our studio here in Riverdale as it moves out toward Murray Lock and Dam. Uh, we're watching these storms. Again, there is now a severe thunderstorm warning on the one out to the west of Little Rock. We're going to watch this storm. They think that this is mainly an elevated storm, maybe not a, a surface-based storm, which would be one that might produce a tornado. But the wind field is so strong that even the tail end of that is trying to rotate. I don't know that it will ever. But even in an area that has had rain and, and the, the atmosphere is not conducive, it's still trying to rotate. Every storm that develops is trying to rotate today and especially the ones that are uh, now coming into southwest Arkansas, out to the west of Gurdon. Uh, and so we're going to watch this, Okolona, south of Antoine. This is a storm that's going to be moving up into Clark County. This is north of I-30, but that's the area that we're going to be watching right there. And then uh, a severe thunderstorm warning on this storm that's out to the west of Arkadelphia, so to Gray Lake and northward. A pretty strong storm there with some wind in it as it kind of parallels I-30, but this is moving off to the north east. The storm out to the east of us is still tornado warned. It's now well to the east of Desarc and uh, Cotton Plant. I'm going to go in a little closer on this. And we'll show you uh, that Little Dixie and Daggett are in the path of this storm. And there's the ro rotation part of it. The 
mesocyclone, this broad area of rotation that occasionally may produce a tornado from that wide area down to a small area. And the velocity product with it right now, getting farther away from the uh, radar site, quite a ways away from the radar site right now, still has a lot of outbound wind, you can see. I don't think the Memphis radar would be, and Memphis radar might be actually closer to it, but still, it's a, it's a broad rotation there. So it would be up to the north of Cotton Plant by the 33 sign right there. It would be somewhere in this area right here, although we're a long way away. North Very of Cotton Very new Plant. tornado warning. New tornado warning just in. Yeah, this is uh, in Hot Spring County. Okay, that's that storm out to the west of Arkadelphia that we just talked about. Okay. Uh, Donaldson, take cover. There's uh, some rotation with this. It has that structure, one of those storms that has the structure. Uh, of, of a tornado, but I don't, I fail to see the velocities of uh, being significant, but the problem here, there it is, there's Caddo Valley, that hook. Yeah. So that's the hook there, Donaldson, take your tornado precautions right now. As I told you, we're still a long way to go. We're still three to four hours to go with this severe weather event, just to let everybody know, uh, at least. Uh, but I think that's, that is when things are gonna hopefully wrap up here in Arkansas. But uh, this does include Malvern along I-30. Let's get a motion uh, on this, put this in the uh, motion, and watch how the storm is coming right up I-30. And again, heading up towards central Arkansas, but I think it's gonna go south on I-30. I think it's gonna get more of an easterly push to it. Uh, but Donaldson, as it comes up Interstate 30, and Malvern, now is the time, Malvern, take your tornado precautions immediately. No confirmed tornado with this, but it uh, could produce one at any moment continuing to scan for the velocity signatures with this using the Little Rock radar and we're getting pretty close to it. Uh, I don't see anything in here that tells me that there's a tornado. Uh, and there's another tornado warning that has just been issued. Uh, let's, I think that, um, could that be this up here towards the north in southern areas of Woodruff County, Barry? I think that might be it. Is that the new one that just got yeah, issued? Yeah, that is, and so, that's just the continuation of right. that storm. And it does look north of Cotton Plant like there's significant rotation here north of Cotton Plant. So there's something trying to develop still with that. And when you look at the, uh, the, the reflectivity and there's the inflow. So there's, there's something trying to develop in this general area. North of Cotton Plant, there's a new radar image that just came in. Let's see if we have a new velocity image with this. And yes, so you see the greens, you see the reds and the yellows. There's some problems with the radar here, but you get the general idea that this is the area that they started and prompted the tornado warning. Uh, moving towards Hunter. So if you're watching this from Hunter, uh, it's a very small community out there just to the east of, east northeast of Cotton Plant. Uh, take your tornado precautions right now. Barry, do you have any other, you're, you're tracking those two tornado warned storms in southwest Arkansas. Yeah, we're gonna be, uh, I, I wanna go to those and then we have a live report coming in, uh, but near Donaldson, uh, north of Caddo Valley, this is that tail right there. And uh, Donaldson, you need to go ahead and take uh, the precaution of getting into the lowest part of your house because this is moving right toward you. There's 67 as it roughly parallels I-30 and it'll be moving that way. So all along 67 as it comes back toward Caddo Valley. Caddo Valley looks like the rotation center is now north of you, but very quickly these storms are moving at 55 to 60 miles an hour. And then we move to the storm that is down uh, to the south, uh, to, the, to the west of Gurdon, and it's hard to get a velocity product on there, but you can see there's a lot of wind energy with that storm out to the west of Gurdon, south of Okalona. And so if you're in that area as well, please go to the safe spot in your house. We're going to continue to watch these supercells. They're all out by themselves. It's like a new tornado warning out to the southwest of there too, outside of our viewing area, but we'll keep a close watch on that. Our meteorologist Melinda Mayo is out and about too, and she is along Rodney Parham. Melinda, are you there? Melinda? The shot went down. Okay. Okay. A lot of folks using cell service right now to communicate because a lot of power is out in uh, so many areas. But uh, if we can get Melinda back, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll talk with her. Uh, <clears throat> the destruction here is, is uh, now coming to light. We're still in the daylight hours, and, uh, but it has is, is carved quite a path. 75,000 that I just saw without power in Arkansas, and I think of the brunt of those are gonna be coming from the Little Rock area, uh, having had a very populated area. I'll, I'll check with the, the uh,
poweroutage.us, and now it says, yeah, 75,000, 61,500 customers without power in Pulaski County alone. And more out in Lone Oak and Prairie County, and even some up into White County, too. So this is obviously a storm that's been on the ground. It may take some time for power to come back on in so many spots. I know crews are already out there trying to clean up, trying to make it safe, and Melinda's then they'll try to restore power on that. We do have our meteorologist, Melinda Mayo. Melinda, what are you seeing out there? Hey guys, uh, it took us a while to make it here to the Colony West Shopping Center where uh, these businesses and this, these homes took a direct hit from this tornado. We actually came down Rodney Parham, crossing over 430, and you could see where the path of the tornado came just north of Emanuel Baptist Church there on Shackleford Road, then crossed over I-430. There were numerous cars that were flipped over there. It came across the Breckenridge Village Shopping Center. Many of those businesses there are heavily damaged. The roof taken off of much of Breckenridge Village Shopping Center and then came right here through the Colony West Shopping Center where uh, there's a Kroger, several businesses. Senior Tequila is right behind me here. Uh, the ambulance are pretty constant as they're getting called out here to uh, search through these homes. This is the neighborhood right behind Colony West Shopping Center, uh, and a lot of the neighbors are just out walking around. I saw a lot of people who were just leaving their businesses because they couldn't get out of their parking lots. The traffic was so backed up, and there was so much debris down in the roadway. So they were just leaving their businesses and walking around trying to assess the damage to see what they could do. So you can see numerous homes here that have been uh, damaged or destroyed. Uh, this is just directly behind the Colony West Shopping Center right off of uh, Rodney Parham. So we're hearing a lot of ambulances. Uh, we have not had any uh, reports of how many injuries are expected. Uh, the law enforcement are out here uh, going through the homes as we speak. Numerous uh, streets are blocked off. So try to stay out of this area if you can uh, because there are power lines down, trees down, uh, pretty much everywhere you look. So a lot of people just kind of walking around, seeing what they can do, uh, taking a lot of pictures. We'll continue to monitor the situation from here. Uh, Desmond is out right now talking to some people who've been affected by this tornado as well. Back to you. All right, Melinda, thanks so much. And that's, uh, that's horrible to see, but we're seeing uh, a lot of damage uh, along Highway 10, Cantrell Road here. Um, I, we haven't seen much from the Chennault Parkway area, but there are power outages uh, out there where Chennault Parkway kind of curves from going uh, almost due west to the to the northwest out around uh, the new Costco, uh, that area. A lot of power outages out there. Parkway Village, that area as well. And so we're, we're seeing a, a lot of uh, damage. But the Cantrell Road Corridor, the Rodney Parham uh, area there at 430, uh, those are particularly hard hit areas. And again, 75,000 without power now. I do want to let you know that there is that uh, tornado warning still. It is coming up. Arkadelphia, you're not technically in that warning. There's another storm just to the north of you, but it's this one that's headed now to the north of Gurdon. So kind of uh, would be crossing I-30 right there, a tornado warning rotation within this storm. And in this wind field, who knows? It could be producing a tornado, although the velocity on it, Right now, we're, we're seeing some inbound wind. We're seeing very little in the way of outbound, but that is a long way from the radar site. So it would be in that area just to the southeast of Oklahoma. That would be the rotating area. And then as we head up the road there toward Donaldson, we don't want to forget about you all. Donaldson, you are still uh, near the back edge of that storm, but I don't see, I don't see a lot of velocity not. on that. But... That's the structure that you see with those, every one of the storms that forms today, every single one of them, and yeah. especially uh, in areas that haven't been hit so far. Yeah, Oklahoma, this storm has, I think, the, the biggest concern. Southern areas of Clark County, yeah. uh, that's coming up southwest of Arkadelphia. Again, Arkadelphia, as we told you earlier, I'd be ready to be put under a tornado warning. I think it's going to happen here soon. Uh, and we'll have to look at the direction of movement, but this... If it continues on that, that's the possible tornado over Highway 51. And if it continues, it's going to go very close to the airport. Uh, do not have any word that this is on the ground. 
This is radar indicated. If it was confirmed, this would turn purple. It's red. So it's radar confirmed right now. Or not radar confirmed. I'm sorry. It's, it's radar indicated, not confirmed. But it's just to the east-southeast of Oklahoma. So that's a very strong area of, uh, of tornadic circulation. Is it extending to the ground? We don't know right now. But Arkadelphia, what we do know is that it's going to come very close to you. And then again, please let anybody that you know in Arkadelphia know. I know we've got a couple of great universities over there. Uh, let the students know. Uh, a lot of them probably gone for the weekend. Uh, here it is Friday afternoon. Uh, nobody should be on the road. I-30, nobody should be on the road in Clark County right now. That's the last place you want to be. Now, uh, I want to put this into motion so we can get a, a sense as to where this is going. So uh, there's the motion, and it's paralleling I-30 on the north side of I-30, and it may be trying to take a little jog to the right. Tornadoes never travel in straight paths. We, you see tornado tracks, and they're never straight. They zig and they zag. So that's, uh, again, the, uh, they just issued a new severe thunderstorm warning. But that's the tornado right in there, if there is one. And at some point, it's going to cross I-30, and I think it's going to do so once it gets closer to Arkadelphia, assuming it holds together. Why do I think it's going to hold together? Again, it's one of those days that we don't see that often in Arkansas, but there's nothing that's impeding it. There's nothing but very warm and unstable air getting drawn into this. There's nothing to disrupt it. This area hasn't had rain. The, the moisture, I haven't looked at the temperatures in there recently, but I think this will have the ability to continue on. Barry has been tracking this one in Hot Spring County near Malvern. Uh, that, the velocities on that look ominous, but the, the uh, I'm sorry, the reflectivity looks ominous, but the velocities do not. So our confidence level of a tornado actually occurring here, quite low, but it could produce one at any moment. It's this one that I think Barry uh, has me concerned for the, uh, for the development of a tornado in this sort of environment. And I think it's gonna be crossing over I-30. Um, zooming into that, there's uh, Dobieville Highway 182, Burt Cell. That's uh, South Fork Road uh, and that's Central Road. That where, is where the tornado would be located uh, coming up and that's right on I-30. Uh, if you excuse me for just one second, I'm gonna go over to Storm Scan, Barry. Yeah. And I'm gonna go look on iDrive. Uh, and Alicia, can, can you look too on iDrive? I-30. Uh, just south of Arkadelphia. Let's let's take a look at that area. Um, uh, yeah, Arkadelphia, Burt Cell, just to the northeast of Burt Cell. So, Barry? Okay, yeah, and uh, okay. I'm looking for some of the traffic cams there, but it, it, Alicia can do that. <clears throat> yeah, there are, there are several in that area. Um, okay, well, let's go back to that storm, and I agree with Todd. The one to the southwest of Arkadelphia is, even, even though it's farther from the radar site, it does exhibit a little more rotation potential, I think. And we'll go to the velocity product on here. And there it is, north of Gurdon. Here's Gurdon right down here. So Highway 53 uh, going up to the northwest, and it will be crossing uh, I-30 there. Uh, it doesn't look all that strong right now, but again, this is looking up at several thousand feet high, and so we can't see the lowest level, uh, and that's what you like to see. That's why a tornado close to a radar site is better than farther away from a radar site, but it will be moving up into the area of around Arkadelphia, and they will be extending that. Uh, it looks like that tornado warning on up to the northeast, so Arkadelphia, I just want you to pay a clo play close attention. Brown Springs, Donaldson, you're still in that storm. Go back to the reflectivity on this. This is just rain, and if rain is being pulled around a rotation center, that's what you're looking at. So this is obviously a supercell storm that's south of Malvern. It'll be moving that way, but the velocities on it do not look that impressive or right now. I'm just going to say you're in a tornado-warned area, and it could be producing one right now around 67, uh, right in here. Okay, north of Donaldson would be the rotation area. There's a new scan still doesn't look all, maybe just to the south of 67 right there. doesn't look terribly impressive, but we have to keep an eye on every scan that comes in because these storms, as they did in Little Rock, it didn't look all that impressive until it got right about to Little Rock, and then it looked terribly impressive on the radar. Um, so we watched that storm, and then the one down to the southwest of Arkadelphia. Other storms now are moving to northeast, uh, Gum Springs. This is okay. There's can we take happening. Storyteller? Yeah, it's just wet roads. Yeah, it's. Um, 
but yeah, it, around Gum Springs. Yeah. Um, and that's uh, along I-30. Uh, but yeah, a lot of rain moving up through that area, obviously. Uh, there is a storm out to the west of Little Rock right now. It does not look like it's rotating. It's around Maumel, but uh, we have to watch everything. That is back in what I would assume is cooled air, Todd. The one, yeah, they got that severe thunderstorm warning in effect there, but I think those are slightly elevated. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, there's a threat because maybe hail and high winds. But uh, in western Pulaski County, I think that that's lightning. The, the, the danger I see is it's not even has to be severe. It has to, it's lightning. Yeah. Even a regular, because there's so many people outside that they don't have shelter anymore. Right. Uh, so lightning is a danger uh, to rescue crews and all the emergency personnel. That is a significant danger, uh, especially with gas leaks, too, going on. Keep that in mind, too. So, yeah, we got a severe thunderstorm warning in effect here for the, uh, for, no, it's north of the West Little Rock area. But, you know, there's still storms that are going to come through Little Rock. And a lot, even if they're not severe, lightning is the problem. All right, down Interstate 30, uh, also Energy is reporting 46,000 without electricity now across Arkansas. And as you can imagine, where a lot of those are, in, uh, are from, from uh, Garland County through Pulaski County. All right, so the uh, velocities, as Barry's been telling you, very unimpressive, thank goodness, in Hot Spring County. That does not mean let your good guard down. Uh, let's continue to check in. Arkadelphia, if there's a tornado, I still see significant rotation near Interstate 30. Uh, there's Interstate 30. This is it. There's uh, South Fork Road. This is uh, Central Road. There's the uh, rotation right there west of I-30, and it's getting close to Arkadelphia. And there's no tornado warning in effect for Arkadelphia right now. But I'll go ahead and say it. Take your tornado precautions. There doesn't need to be a tornado warning in effect for me to tell you that. Take your tornado precautions, Arkadelphia, and areas especially just to the south of town. Uh, I guarantee you there will be a new tornado warning issue with this uh, as it moves towards the north. And that tornado warning is going to take into account most likely northeastern areas of uh, Clark County into the northwestern areas of Dallas County, western Dallas County, and possibly even into southern areas of, uh, of Hot Spring and, and, and uh, Grant counties as well. So that storm means business. It's on I-30 uh, and no tornado warning in effect. I, I, I wish that they would get one, an official one going, Barry. But that, the, the storm that's moving out of uh, Woodruff County now, it does not look as strong as it was a little while ago. So that's why we're kind of diverting our attention down Interstate 30. Uh, north of Gurdon uh, and coming into Arkadelphia. No tornado warning. As soon as one gets issued, you'll see the, the logo pop up here that says, new, there it is, new tornado warning. It does include Arkadelphia. This is going to come very close to town and just south. So there's the tornado warning now in effect for Arkadelphia. There's Highway 7 going out of town. It's going to cross over Highway 7. It's basically on and paralleling I-30 getting ready to cross, probably right where that graphic, that shield is, that says I-30. Uh, again, one of those tornadoes that's not confirmed, it's radar indicated, but in an environment that is extraordinarily conducive to producing large tornadoes. So that's the concern. Even, again, southern areas of Hot Spring County, there it is for northwestern uh, Dallas County, and then for northeastern areas of uh, Clark County, the tornado warning has been issued. Uh, that This tornado warning here will go away, that polygon right there will go away because this new one uh, replaces that as it's, you see it was right on the beginning of that and this one I don't see continuing the one in Hot Spring County stay sheltered until that's gone and at that point when that happens this will be the only storm at the time that we're uh, have great concern over it's not the one uh, at this time that's getting ready to exit the Channel 7 viewing area and I think most of it has it's always worth checking in on it to, to just make sure that we're clear with that. There may be some rotation with this, but it's moving out of the Channel 7 viewing area and it's crossed over the county line. There is rotation with it, northeast of Cotton Plant. When, while that's not our viewing area, I know that there are viewers and I know that there are relatives and there are friends. I would tell everybody in Wynn, if you know them, take their tornado precautions now out in Cross County. You have a tornado warning in effect and there is rotation right in there along two, uh, uh, it's 284 moving off towards the east, uh, northeast of Cotton Plant. So Cotton Plant, you are under a tornado warning, but you're in the clear because that storm is well past you. There will probably be more storms, Cotton Plant, 
but uh, you're going to get a break, and the tornado worn storm is now northeast of you. Wind needs to take their tornado precautions, and we're going to hand that over to the Jonesboro TV market and the Memphis tornado market as well, uh, television market, I should say, uh, as they will cover that as it moves into eastern Arkansas. Severe thunderstorm warning continues for southern Faulkner County, far northern uh, Pulaski County, and these severe thunderstorm warnings and tornado warnings in southwest Arkansas along I-30 uh, are the, the things that, uh, again, they're, gonna, they're not going to stop. There's, like I said, they're going to start to clean this up, all these polygons. Uh, you saw that one tornado warning gone. There's the severe thunderstorm warning. And this tornado warning near Malvern, i got to find out how long that's in effect. But I don't think, and I'm going to look at the velocity, look at the velocities there, I don't see anything. Uh, if there's a tornado, this is why they're warning it for that hook on the southwest side, southeast side of Malvern moving off towards the northeast. And that will be entering northeastern areas, northwestern areas of Grant County. But I don't see the velocity signatures. They may continue it just because it has that structure, that look with the reflectivity. But here, uh, coming into Arkadelphia, you now are now under a tornado warning in Arkadelphia. There it is. It looks like that may have the, the circulation has just crossed over I-30. It's now coming in just a few miles south of town. And uh, just measuring the distance, the circulation with that is five miles due south of Arkadelphia. And it's going to go just to the south of town, most likely. Uh, so it may mm -hmm. not impact Arkadelphia directly, but I want you to stay sheltered. It's the areas just to the south of Arkadelphia that I think have uh, the potential of seeing a tornado with this. No confirmation. We're looking at all different avenues of information, including the National Weather Service. This is the airport, Arkansas, uh, Arkadelphia Ar Municipal Airport. It just went over Highway 67. That's it. Joan, Brown Springs, Highway 7. Those are the locations that could see the potential tornado. Uh, take your tornado precautions. And those who survive tornadoes will tell you it's that interior home. Put as many walls between you and the outside and absolutely no windows. That's the last thing you want is flying glass, and that's why we tell you, you want a buffer zone between you and the outside. Some of the other locations, there's Hasley Road, there's Mary Lane, that's it on Highway 67, West Reynolds Road, Hasley Road again, and there's Copeland Ridge Road. Some of the, if you're familiar with that area of Clark County, that's where the circulation is most likely passing over. Uh, it looks like there's a lot of small streets in this area, some subdivisions. Uh, it is worth looking at the debris detector and I don't see anything there. But we're <clears throat> Nothing also obvious on that, no, Todd. No. Yeah. So, but there it is. It's it's now has jumped over the interstate, uh, and it's going to cross over Highway Seven, just uh, south southeast of Arkadelphia. All right. Yeah, two storms that we're looking at. That one is uh, the, to the south of Arkadelphia, more impressive than the one that is up uh, to the south of Malvern. But still, there is that feature. It's still a supercell storm. Uh, as we look at meteorology textbooks. That's what a supercell looks like, in, and uh, that's what we learned back in school. Uh, that's what they look like, and you don't want them to be all out by themselves, but that's what they are today. Let's take a look again at uh, I-430. This is the iDrive Arkansas and Storyteller. Uh, there is still, I-430 is still shut down, I believe. They are still getting, uh, they're kind of zooming around in there. But I-430, I think, has been completely shut down at Rodney Perham, both northbound and southbound. They could be starting to divert traffic out onto Rodney Perham and maybe then taking it back toward the east on Rodney Perham. But <clears throat> if we can take that, I'll kind of show you what the iDrive Arkansas map is. Yeah, they're turning folks around. So effectively, there is no traffic going. Yeah, that's I-430. You can see some of the debris on the side of the road. It looks like road signs, maybe other uh, bits of metal there. That is a traffic snarl, uh, both southbound and northbound. And Just it's avoid, up. nobody should be out there. No, but see, they're diverting some cars out onto Rodney Parham, and I don't know if, they're, uh, if you're able to go westbound. It looks like you're able to go westbound there uh, on Rodney Parham. Uh, so that's probably the direction they're taking, folks, and that may be <clears throat> out and around and out Hinson and out to Highway 10, but I'm just guessing to get around that. Uh, but that, that's what we're looking at right now. All right, let's take a look back at our storms that are ongoing south of Malvern and then the one that's down to the south of Arkadelphia. These are tornado-worn storms. 
and uh, the one to the south of Arkadelphia looks like it will go to the south, the rotation, boy, just down to the south of the airport there. But that still, that's a pretty tight, not maybe terribly strong, but pretty tight. I think there definitely could be a tornado being produced at least from time to time there. We don't see any indication of debris being lofted up by this storm, but that is a certainly a potential one as it moves off to the uh, to the northeast in the small communities of Joan, Griffith Town, probably just to the south of where this thing has been tracking. But Arkadelphia, I want you to keep uh, watch on this storm as well. Again, it has the look of that hook signature, that hook echo there, rain being pulled around a circulation center, whether broadly or in a tight pattern like a tornado would produce. And then on up uh, as we look out east now of Malvern, and this is on 270 out to the east of Malvern. And uh, you can see a new severe thunderstorm warning has been issued for that storm. There still is, it's still technically in a tornado warning out to the west of Poen there. But uh, a new severe thunderstorm warning has been issued for this area and not a new tornado warning. So they're kind of seeing at the National Weather Service what we're seeing. This does not have the velocity signature on it that would indicate really tight rotation out to the west of Perrin. We're going to continue to watch that area, though, between Poen and uh, Poen rather and, and Malvern. And uh, it still looks like it's rotating, but uh, just looking at the wind field inside it, that's one thing with Doppler radar that we can look at and you can really see it so well. So the one south of Arkadelphia, that still has the potential, I think, to be producing a tornado. Out to the east of town on Highway 7, please be in your safe spot between Arkadelphia and Griffith Town and the small community of Joan. And I'll just take you back in time on this one. And you can see that the rotation briefly, as it crossed I-30, got pretty strong and now may not be quite as strong. Just one or two scans ago, it was much stronger than it is right now as it moves off to the northeast. So hopefully these storms will begin to, as we get into the late afternoon now, uh, they'll begin to lose some of their fuel that's necessary and some of the instability aloft. Obviously there is a, an area of instability that is aloft here. There's a lot of wind uh, up into northeast Arkansas, we haven't talked about this storm very much, but this uh, storm is now a confirmed tornado heading toward Wynn. And so that is in an area of the state, Todd, and I think that northeast part of the state for a while is where the, the focus will be, along with, briefly, south-central Arkansas, Arkadelphia, Malvern, eastward for a little while longer. Right. Uh, uh, also getting word now, Barry, that our Spirit of Arkansas Tornado Relief our promotions manager has just sent me a text uh, saying that uh, it is active, so we're going to start. If you want to help your neighbor in need, we're going we're to have that up and going, and I just want to let news know that there should be a graphic with a QR code. Um, but um, they, that is uh, active, and we're going to do our part to help you that have been affected with this. Uh, also, we have James Bryant live as we track this tornado again, going over Highway 7, potential tornado south of Arkadelphia, Meteorologist James Bryant, are you there? Yeah, hey guys, I'm back in North Little Rock um, and I'm at the command center at MacArthur and Military Drive, MacArthur Military Drive. Now behind me, I want you to see the level of destruction. There's the Valero slash McDonald's that sits at the corner of MacArthur and uh, Military sustained heavy, heavy damage. There's water coming out of the uh, of that building and just look around it, the tops of the trees, um, the North Little Rock Fire Department and Maumel uh, Fire Department are here. Special operations are here. Um, you notice in the tops of the trees, Charles, if you can get in real tight on some of those trees, there's insulation in all the trees. If you'll remember uh, in our live hit um, just a few, um, uh, just about an hour ago, uh, the tornado went through a bunch of houses. So there's a lot of insulation that it pulled up and now this insulation is in the tops of the trees. As you look further to the right, you'll look right there at that uh, hibachi and sushi place nearly untouched there's damage but it's not as bad as the area to the right how about that dogtown pizza he just the, uh, the roof heavily damaged you see the trees there uh, off to the right or down and this uh, power lines 
down as well. I want to pan to the command center because this is uh, the command center in North Little Rock. You've got Game and Fish, North Little Rock Police Department, North Little Rock Fire Department, Maumel Fire Department, Pafford, and MEMS all here at the Super Stop at Military Drive and MacArthur. And this is where the command center is. There's been uh, numerous teams leaving the command center with uh, search and rescue tools. And I think they're just getting ready to clear roads as well. Um, so this is the current situation in North Little Rock. Um, again, this is at MacArthur and Military Drive. Um, tough scene, but there are still buildings standing and um, I, there's no word on injuries or fatalities just yet. I just talked to uh, one of the uh, uh, PIOs here of the North Little Rock Fire Department. They're gonna be releasing that information once they have it, and that's gonna be later on here, uh, probably within a couple of hours, guys. All right, so thank you very much, James. Uh, again, south of Arkadelphia now, Chief Meteorologist Barry Brandt, I think it may, again, win tornado emergency, confirmed tornado up there. Uh, what do you have, Barry? Well, it's still south of Arkadelphia. It's probably the most uh, apparent rotation there. It's moving across Highway 7 as it extends out on the east and southeast side of Arkadelphia, out of town. <clears throat> Pardon me. And the uh, velocity product. Boy, just out to the east of town there, I don't think it is what it was. No, it's weakened a little bit. Yeah, and let me just take you back, and I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Folks, I'll go back. This was just a few scans ago. This was at 431, and you can see this was south of Arkadelphia right there, kind of a tight couplet. And now, as it moves a little bit closer, I don't see much, but I still see something out on the southeast side of town. It's rather broad but it would be right in there that we're looking at as it moves toward Brown Springs along Highway 51. And so that's out to the east of Arkadelphia. Um, and that is, that is the strongest storm that I see other than the one that's up in northeast Arkansas. <clears throat> the storm east of Malvern, that is not tornado warned anymore. That will be expiring. That's north of Poen. And it is a strong storm and we'll continue to watch it because it's relatively out by itself. But there's quite a bit of rain out from it, and there could be a little bit of outflow from it as well. And those storms aren't the ones that really produce tornadoes. Uh, but today, we watch every storm. Storm near Wynn looks particularly dangerous. That is moving over into the Memphis uh, television market. We'll keep a watch on it. And then a storm around Cabot, north side of Cabot this time, has a wind potential with it. And there could be uh, some uh, hail potential also with that as it kind of parallels Highway 67, 167 up on the, the north side from uh, Greystone on up to the northeast. That is not tornado warned and the velocity inside it. That's what we always want to look at. Yeah, I don't see anything impressive in that. So that is great news. Uh, we'll continue to watch these storms. I think some of the uh, some of the better what we call dynamics in the atmosphere are probably going to lift up into northeast Arkansas and points northeastward. But for a brief time, we have to watch those storms that are south of the Little Rock area because it's still relatively warm there. I don't think we're done with this. It's 442. I think uh, if you would have asked us early in the day when our, our time frame was, it was from about 1 o'clock to about 7, 730 or so. And that's probably what it's going to end up being. So we've got a while to watch other storms out here. Uh, but uh, a lot of the energy for this storm, I think, came in maybe uh, in the early afternoon. We're going to continue to watch, though, that storm out to the east of Arkadelphia. If it begins to ramp back up, obviously that's the one that we're going to be watching uh, a little more closely. It's weak rotation there. Red and green out to the east of uh, Brown Springs. It's clearly east of Arkadelphia. It will be moving up toward uh, that southeastern part of Hot Spring County. So that is an area, the small community of Brown Springs. We continue to look, we get uh, pictures in, we'll have many more obviously uh, uh, reports of damage, but we're getting a lot of damage reports. Not far from Riverdale here, our station was narrowly missed by this uh, tornado. We watched it go just by our station. The area from Kamek Village down toward Murray Lock and Dam and down Rebsman Park Road has been damaged heavily. There are numerous reports of, uh, of damage. We're getting more pictures in. Our friend David Basil has been sending photos and images and videos to us. 
and there are so many coming in that we can't really turn around all of those, but we're going to continue to watch for that. But this, this has been a catastrophic uh, storm. Yes, it has, Barry. Uh, it has been a catastrophic storm and day for all yeah, of us. For so many people. So many people that we know and so many people that we love in our life. Uh, this has hit many of our families, have been affected by this tornado today. Uh, a lot of people don't know who, where some people are right now and we're trying to account for everybody. Um, the tornado warnings, I, they're still there. And we're going to prepare, hopefully we will have a Channel 7 newscast, which will, of course, we're going to be covering the tornado damage. Uh, but when we're going to cover the tornadoes too. But uh, <clears throat> right now in this I-30, uh, that tornado warning gone. And this one for Arkadelphia, uh, uh, south of Arkadelphia, it's, it's almost gone. It expires at 5 o'clock, this one does. And if it maintains itself and that it, it does not strengthen anymore, then I think we're going to uh, be okay to go to news. And let me tell you, we're going to be here for you. But uh, we're going to have coverage of uh, all of our crews out in the field uh, track, uh, 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 bringing you the aftermath of this storm. Uh, this, again, back to the radar. Stay with me, guys. Uh, new severe thunderstorm warning has been issued for northern Grant County. That's because of that storm that was tornado warned. Uh, and it, there's storms still that have to go through the metro. This is what I want to show you. They're not severe, but they got lightning in them. Uh, and that's a danger in this situation with people outside. Uh, you see the storms, they are severe warned, and, and I'm looking at this one near Cabot. Uh, it's worth zooming in on that because I see an appendage on that. Uh, and it doesn't take much to get one of these thunderstorms to produce a tornado. I do not see, in Cabot, I do not see uh, anything on velocities which would suggest a tornado is forming. But when, again, you look at, and there's a severe thunderstorm warning in effect, but when you look at the reflectivity presentation, there's a little bit of a hook. Again, no tornado.